luego de la pérdida de millones de vidas, millones de empleos, millones de pequeñas y medianas empresas, así como de la destrucción del patrimonio de millones de familias en el mundo como consecuencia de la pandemia que después de dos años aún no termina. Como, exprese, como expresó nuestro presidente Iván Duque, la voz de Colombia se suma a las voces que están aquí en esta conferencia de manera espontánea porque estamos verdaderamente convencidos de los principios que aquí estamos defendiendo. Es de una inmensa gravedad la situación que estamos viviendo y por esa razón no podemos permanecer impasibles ante esta situación. Estamos acá con el compromiso genuino por la paz mundial, sin oportunismos de coyuntura, y verdaderamente convencidos de la inmensa gravedad de las violaciones que están ocurriendo y del funesto precedente para el futuro mismo de la humanidad en caso de que ellas pudieran consolidarse sin consecuencias graves y contundentes para el agresor cualquiera que él sea. Las consecuencias jurídicas de la invasión a Ucrania son evidentes a la luz del régimen actual de responsabilidad internacional estatal adoptado por la Comisión de Derechos derecho internacional hace ya 21 años. Rusia debe responder internacionalmente por las consecuencias humanitarias, económicas, jurídicas y de toda índole del hecho ilícito internacional en el que ha incurrido. Su ofensiva atenta contra las normas internacionales imperativas o de Jules Cohen's quebrantando el principio de que ningún Estado debe ser objeto de amenazas o uso de la fuerza que atente contra su soberanía, su independencia política o su integridad territorial. Asimismo, todos los Estados aquí representados estamos obligados a cumplir con las siguientes obligaciones. Primero, la obligación positiva de cooperar para poner fin por todos los medios lícitos que sean posibles a la violación grave de las normas de Jews Cohen's cometidas por Rusia. En segundo lugar, debemos atender la obligación negativa de no reconocer una situación de hecho impuesta por la fuerza mediante la violación grave del derecho internacional ni prestar ayuda o facilitar que se mantenga esta situación con todas sus implicaciones. Por lo anterior, señor presidente, Colombia ha copatrocinado y apoya en todas sus partes la resolución sometida ante esta Asamblea Extraordinaria. Sin perjuicio de la responsabilidad en la que ya ha incurrido Rusia, Colombia considera que esta Asamblea debe ser la génesis de proyectos concluyentes y por eso aquí cabe recomendar a todos los Estados miembros la imposición contundente, simultánea e integral de sanciones económicas siempre que haya un agresor como medio para presionar la inmediata suspensión de las ofensas al derecho internacional. Hoy, esta mañana, hemos conocido la muerte de docenas de niños ucranianos. ¿Cuántos más? Las sanciones tímidas y graduales ya han mostrado su estrendoso fracaso reciente en varios lugares conocidos. En algunos países latinoamericanos se han traducido en la creciente violación de derechos humanos a pesar de estas sanciones tímidas, en la restricción de más libertades políticas y en la supresión de la libertad de expresión, porque cuando hay regímenes totalitarios, ellos necesitan una reacción verdaderamente contundente. Aquellos que no tienen una elección democrática de sus ciudadanos ya saben cómo pueden manejar a las sanciones a Una segunda medida que debemos considerar es poner en marcha todos los mecanismos existentes para verificar el cumplimiento de los compromisos en materia de desarme de los estados que poseen armas nucleares. En estos momentos, Colombia preside en Ginebra la conferencia de desarme en cabeza de nuestra embajadora, la doctora Alicia Arango, y este tema debe tratarse en ese foro con sentido de urgencia, como lo ha dicho nuestro presidente, dadas las recientes medidas anunciadas por Rusia. Aplaudimos la decisión del fiscal de la Corte Penal Internacional, Karim Khan, de iniciar una investigación en relación con posibles crímenes de guerra, de lesa humanidad o actos de genocidio que se hayan podido cometer 
en el territorio de Ucrania. Las personas responsables de estos delitos deben ser procesadas individualmente por la Corte Penal Internacional para que respondan por sus actos ante la comunidad internacional. Esa es una cuestión en la que todos los estados que hacemos parte del Estatuto de Roma debemos hacer seguimiento. Hoy, como en 1950, se requiere estar unidos por la paz, que es la principal razón de ser y la primera responsabilidad del Sistema de Naciones Unidas y del Consejo de Seguridad. La nación rusa durante décadas ha contribuido de muchas maneras a la evolución de la humanidad y también al progreso en la construcción del edificio del derecho internacional desde las conferencias de paz de la Haya, la elaboración también de la Carta de las Naciones Unidas y los acuerdos de Helsinki. Y esa es una contribución que todos debemos reconocer. Lastimosamente, buena parte de los, eh, eh, de los eh, actos condenados en esa declaración de Helsinki, vemos que los está cometiendo hoy Rusia como principal actor y protagonista. Aún es tiempo para que la Federación Rusa, que presidió hasta ayer el Consejo de Seguridad y por lo tanto debería ser el garante del cumplimiento de la Carta y del derecho internacional, regrese al cauce del cumplimiento y promoción de las normas, por ejemplo, mediante la implementación urgente de medidas de confianza mutua que permitan retomar el camino de la negociación. Colombia está convencida que el diálogo y la negociación son el camino para resolver los conflictos. Sin embargo, cualquier negociación entre Rusia y el gobierno de Ucrania debe adelantarse sin amenaza para Ucrania y sin doblegar ese espíritu de libertad y de progreso, de democracia y de respeto a los derechos humanos que reconocemos en Ucrania y debemos procurar todos acompañar cualquier diálogo siempre y cuando conduzca a la cesación inmediata de las operaciones militares especiales de Rusia. Asimismo, ese proceso debe contar con el acompañamiento del secretario general de la Organización para la Seguridad y Cooperación en Europa, así como otras organizaciones internacionales y regionales para lograr el inmediato desescalamiento de este conflicto en el que toda la humanidad y evitar entonces una agresión y una amenaza de destrucción masiva que, repito, no podemos permitir que terminen quebrando esa voluntad de libertad, soberanía e independencia que ha expresado el pueblo ucraniano en distintos momentos de la historia y más recientemente en el 2014. Resultaría inaceptable que en las actuales circunstancias, con una pandemia inconclusa, el mundo deba regresar a una carrera armamentista dejando de lado la agenda de desarrollo. Por el contrario, Debemos continuar por el bien de la humanidad con la agenda de cambio climático, la equidad de género, la transición energética, la reducción del hambre en el mundo, la lucha contra la pobreza y la totalidad de los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible while also sending a clear message that all free nations of the world do not accept threats from any country to the sovereignty of any member of this organization. The Russian Federation cannot uh, save time or turn the clock back in time uh, to a period when uh, great empires flourish at the cost of other peoples. Uh, Uh, the world will not accept such a return to the past. Thank you very much, sir. I thank the Vice President and Minister for Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Colombia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Paraguay. Señor Presidente, Señor Secretario General, President, uh, 
Señora Secretary General, Vice President de Colombia, Vice President of Colombia, Your Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, Paraguay supports uh, the convening of this special emergency meeting of the General Assembly as it is the most democratic and plural body of our world organization. It is being held under the resolution United for Peace. Since the calls uh, we have been making and repeating as a majority of countries and the main world leaders have constantly been making have not been enough to stop what we so greatly feared. Unfortunately, for reasons we are all aware of, the Security Council was unable to make progress in its attempts to prevent the escalation of this conflict, which once again reaffirms the urgent need for it to be reformed. Since then, the situation has only worsened, including with the threat of the use of nuclear weapons. In this regard, we agree with the Secretary General, and we support the previous speakers on the point that there is no justification whatsoever for the use of nuclear weapons. Or Antes as, bien, and it, they should not be used a los llamados as a means of intimidation a los estados con armas nucleares we a cumplir con sus obligaciones call together with en virtud the other al member states uh, for no nuclear weapon states uh, to comply with their colegas, uh, obligations under the Paraguay non proliferation treaty. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, the people of Paraguay have condemned uh, the attack on the people of Paraguay as a violation of national sovereignty. And we have also called for the immediate cessation of the hostilities and the resumption of dialogue and negotiation in order to achieve a peaceful, mutually acceptable and lasting terrible solution. Hoy padecida por Ucrania, además, pone en vilo el orden jurídico que hemos creado hace 76 años en la conferencia de San Francisco sobre la proscripción del uso de la fuerza o de la amenaza para la solución de una controversia internacional, buscando consagrar el derecho internacional como única garantía para todos los Estados miembros de esta organización. Por estas razones, la voz de los países que queremos la paz, que cese la violencia y que se acaben las hostilidades de manera inmediata debe ser escuchada con fuerza. Hoy más que nunca, por ello también hemos decidido copatrocinar y votar a favor del proyecto de resolución que será presentado a la consideración de la Asamblea General, tal y como lo hicimos el viernes pasado con el proyecto presentado al Consejo de Seguridad. El Consejo de Seguridad debe asumir su papel y ejercer su función. Esperamos que la serie de mecanismos con we hope que that the series of mechanisms it has and which we heard in the statements of its activated, members uh, yesterday can be urgently activated and begin to produce results to reestablish peace and security above all most urgently to relieve the pain and suffering of all those affected in this regard we have por pedido de las delegaciones de Francia y México para evaluar la situación humanitaria sobre el terreno y determinar las necesidades. Asimismo, nos sumamos al llamado para que todas las partes faciliten la llegada de la asistencia humanitaria y del personal humanitario y que se atienda de forma urgente a todas las personas en situación de vulnerabilidad, en especial a las mujeres y niños. Señor Presidente, distinguidos colegas, el Paraguay como miembro del Consejo de Derechos Humanos de las Naciones Unidas hizo en Ginebra un llamado vehemente por la paz y el respeto de los derechos fundamentales de todas las personas afectadas por el conflicto en Ucrania. Como bien lo señaló el Canciller Nacional en el segmento de alto nivel del Consejo, y cito, Estamos en un momento de perplejidad y de conmoción. 
ante el flagelo de la guerra, donde la violación de los derechos humanos es un presupuesto lamentable e indeseable. Fin de la cita. Por eso el Paraguay ha apoyado la realización de una reunión urgente sobre la situación en Ucrania para abordar esta crisis desde la perspectiva integral de los derechos humanos, donde el derecho a la vida sobresale como el derecho más preciado a proteger. Señor Presidente, colegas, también es imperiosa la necesidad de que rápidamente se retomen los procesos negociadores de manera constructiva y flexible sobre la base de los mecanismos internacionales con apego al derecho internacional, a los principios de la Carta de las Naciones Unidas, la resolución 2202 de carácter obligatorio, como todos sabemos, en virtud al artículo 25 de la Carta, incluido el respeto a la soberanía, la independencia y la integridad territorial de los Estados. Este es un llamado claro y directo que venimos repitiendo desde el primer día de nuestras declaraciones. Este es el único camino. Finalmente, auguramos que las conversaciones que empezaron en la mañana de ayer sean el inicio para superar esta crisis de forma sostenible y duradera, reiterando la necesidad de alcanzar un alto fuego inmediato a fin de que las mismas prosigan sin ningún tipo de condicionamiento. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Paraguay. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Dominican Republic. Señor Presidente, Mr. President, Señor Secretario General, Mr. Secretary General, agradecemos la rapidez con que su presidencia ha asumido la convocatoria de esta sesión de emergencia para tratar la situación creada con la ocupación militar rusa a territorio de Ucrania, también miembro pleno de esta organización. Reconocemos los esfuerzos realizados por el secretario general y por su excelencia en favor de lograr que el diálogo y la concertación vuelvan a la mesa. In order to bring uh, dialogue and cooperation back to the table Tal at this difficult uh, period el for humanity, de la Republica Dominicana, Luis as expressed by the President of the Dominican Nuestro Republic, Luis Sabinader, and I quote, con la invasión militar perpetrada por Rusia contra el pueblo de Ucrania. La Federación Rusa, con su decisión, está violando la Carta de las Naciones Unidas, los Acuerdos de Minsk y el Memorándum de Budapest. The Minsk Así agreements como innumerables and the resoluciones del Consejo de Seguridad y de esta Asamblea General. Con esta acción se están quebrantando principios action, elementales del derecho internacional, como son el respeto law, a la integridad territorial de los Estados, el compromiso de resolver las controversias por métodos pacíficos y de abstenerse de recurrir a la amenaza o al uso de la fuerza, y el respeto a la independencia política y a la no intervención en los asuntos internos de otros estados. Señor Presidente, la República Dominicana, firme creyente de la convicción, the Dominican Republic, a staunch pueblos, believer in peaceful coexistence between peoples, a defender of an international legal framework which guarantees the fundamental rights, speaks out by co-sponsoring this resolution and voting for it, and voting for it, and voting for it, and voting for it, and voting for it. Que se estará presentando en esta histórica sesión especial de emergencia y reiteramos nuestro llamado a deponer las armas como urgencia y a privilegiar la negociación diplomática. Luego de esta terrible pandemia, a lo que el mundo aspira es a reencauzarse por el camino de la estabilidad, donde prime la solidaridad. 
No But queremos más muertes y desolación. Ya en este conflicto se registran cientos de fallecimientos y las consecuencias humanitarias y económicas son impredecibles. Señor Presidente, colegas, como representantes ante esta organización, todos nuestros países, grandes y pequeños, tenemos la responsabilidad y el deber de respetar Have the responsibility and the duty to respect the Charter of the United Nations. In the case of my country, the Dominican Republic, these values are non-negotiable. As a founding member of these Nations Unidas, we will continue to hold high the democratic principles that brought us all to San Francisco in June of 1945. Que estemos hoy debatiendo sobre este doloroso tema, e instamos a todas las delegaciones a que apoyemos de manera firme y decidida el deseo y el derecho de Ucrania, como el de todos los países del mundo, de poder vivir en paz. Hoy la humanidad espera por nosotros. No le fallemos. Muchas gracias. I thank the distinguished representative of Dominican Republic. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Suriname. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, colleagues. The Republic of Suriname has taken note with great concern of the Russian invasion in Ukraine and strongly condemns this military intervention. Suriname supports the principles of international law as enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations and underscores the independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine. The Russian invasion of a sovereign and independent state cannot be accepted and any, any on, under any circumstances and must stop immediately. This invasion will have far-reaching consequences for the people of Ukraine, and it is a serious threat to peace and security, both in the region and the world. Mr. President, in this regard, the government of the Republic of Suriname would like to reiterate its principal position with respect to the following. Peaceful coexistence, the re-establishment of dialogue in every existing conflict, regardless of its nature, the upholding of the internationally agreed principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of states, non-intervention, and respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. In light of the above, Suriname urges all parties involved to engage responsibly and practice restraint in order to prevent destabilization of the region. Mr. President, there are no winners in any war. War brings only human suffering and devastation. Suriname expresses its concern about the humanitarian situation in Ukraine and calls upon all parties to allow and facilitate the safe and unrestrained access of humanitarian assistance to those in need, to protect civilians, including those who are humanitarian personnel and persons in vulnerable situations. Suriname welcomes the actions undertaken by the Secretary General and the and the United Nations in this regard and supports the Secretary General's call to end the war. Mr. President, the Republic of Suriname maintains diplomatic relations with both Russia and Ukraine and shall continue to call for processes of dialogue and diplomacy, which are essential elements that contribute to maintaining peace, stability, and security. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Suriname.
And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Brunei Darussalam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Brunei Darussalam expresses concern over the escalation of tensions and military actions in Ukraine and continues to closely monitor developments in the country. Brunei Darussalam condemns any violation of sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of any country and reiterates the importance of upholding the principle of rule-based framework and respect of it for international law. Finally, Brunei Darussalam calls on all parties directly involved to de-escalate tensions and refrain from acts that may aggravate the situation further and settle all differences by peaceful means without resorting to the threat or use of force in accordance with the UN Charter and international law in the interests of maintaining international peace and stability. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative, Brunei Darussalam. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Palau. Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Palau aligns itself with a statement made by Fiji in its capacity as chair of the Pacific Island Forum. We additionally make the following statement in our national capacity. Ukraine and Palau have little in common. One is a large post-Soviet state in Eastern Europe, and the other is a small blue ocean state, an archipelago of tropical islands in the Pacific. Yet we feel a certain kinship with Ukraine because we could be considered close siblings in the birth of nations. Ukraine became independent most recently in 1991, and Palau shortly thereafter in 1994. And it hasn't escaped us that if the turns of fate had had one of our former colonizers act with the aggression of Russia towards us, that it would have been our people who are suffering the atrocities of war that's happening in Ukraine today. That it might have been my own five-year-old that was killed in the ki in kindergarten that was bombed. That it might have been a Palauan grandfather who fled his home with nothing except the belongings on his back. That it might have been a Palauan woman who would have been forced on what should have been one of the most joyous days of a woman's life, to give birth in a bomb shelter against the booming noise of the missile strikes in the background, or finally, that it might have been hundreds of our civilians who would have been killed in their homes, all in pursuit of Putin's self-proclaimed principle of historical unity. As we look around the room, few of us are immune to historical unity as a justification of war. In fact, our colorful histories are often the basis for the woven identities of many of us. How many of us are former colonies and or lived under a foreign rule at one time or another? How many languages are spoken in our countries? And so on. Our historical past is part of the beauty of our fabric as an integrated world, not a perverse excuse to wage an unprovoked war on our neighbors. In this spirit, Palau asks for your vote in favor of today's resolution to condemn Russia and its use of force against Ukraine. Call your capitals. Make the case that we must defend the UN Charter. We cannot stand by as Russia looks to dismantle the rules-based world order in pursuit of its own self-interest. The German Lutheran pastor Martin Niemöller wrote the following while reflecting on the danger of inaction in World War II. First they came for the socialists, and I didn't speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Ukraine, Palau stands with you. We will continue to speak out and fight for the principles of the UN Charter 
human rights, and international law, we, we will continue to oppose the inhumanity wrought by unjust illegal warfare. We call on all member states to join us. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Palau. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Antigua and Barbuda. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, colleagues, I stand before you as a representative of the government of Antigua and Barbuda, and we stand in solidarity with the government and people of Ukraine. We're troubled by the invasion of Ukraine, and we ask our colleagues member of this body, the Russian Federation, to cease the war and withdraw from the territory of Ukraine. Mr. President, on February 8th, three weeks ago, the Foreign Minister of Antigua and Barbuda noted, and I quote, as a small country to which sovereignty, territorial integrity, self Determination are vitally important. Antigua and Barbuda are anxious that these principles must be respected and be upheld everywhere. Mr. President, when these principles are threatened anywhere, our people, the global community, has an obligation to all countries, big or small, powerful or powerless, to speak out and stand up, lest our silence be misconstrued as consent. We recognize that the powerful country of Russia has security gains over Ukraine. But, Mr. President, such concerns do not justify any attempt at all to use force and to invade against the country of Ukraine and its people, it's, it, and to cripple its sovereignty. Antigua and Barbuda believes in international peace and security and adherence to international law by all countries. That's what we stood for. This is central to our own security as a small island state. We will not condone any, any act or the force of in invasion. We will not condone the, viola the violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of any country. Therefore, Mr. President, we reject in the strongest way possible the use of force that is currently being waged upon the independent and sovereignty of the country of Ukraine. We ask our friends again to stop and, re and remove all troops from the territory of Ukraine. Our small nation also recognizes that the conflict in Ukraine plunges our world further into a grave uncertainty with consequential impacts on our entire global community, which is only now recovering from the effects of the pandemic. The, con the, con the conflict in Ukraine has derailed the discussion and the recent report of the IPPCC and takes away much effort that is needed to deal with the issues of climate change. Mr. President, in the recovery from the pandemic, small states like mine have seen, according to UNTAD's report, 
essential goods increased on an average of about 7.5%. This crisis only exacerbates the situation in these island nations. This situation must stop, Mr. President. The crisis, for, is, this is a crisis for all of us, and we all must speak out for diplomacy. We all must support this resolution. It means as much to the small states as the big states. My government fully supports the efforts of the Secretary General, and we urge Russia, the Russian Federation, to retain, return to the table and choose diplomacy over confrontation. We, as a small state, would have hoped that na the nations of the world had placed conflict before confrontation and that this was, be was behind us. We hoped that the use of force to coerce so a sovereign nation was a thing of the past. We hoped, Mr. President, that all countries of the world had, had matured enough to accept consultation over confrontation and negotiations over provocation. We regret, colleagues, that our friends in Russia have chosen either, or they are either unable or unwilling to follow the United Nations Charter and the principles of this charter to which they were a party. We ask that this war be ceased and stopped. Mr. President, we were very disappointed with the use of the veto in, in which we trusted and enshrined in uh, the P5. This General Assembly must stand up to show that the use of the veto must not be used selfishly, that us agreeing and supporting this resolution calls for a change in the way the veto is used. Mr. President, we have heard that the East and the West argument. This is not an East and West argument. This is a pivotal moment for the United Nations. And if we stand up and show solidarity together, we will change the, for, the vision that the East can do one thing or the West can do one thing. And whenever this occurs again, and we hope never, we will stand up against it. Mr. President, Antigua and Barbuda fully supports the resolution that is before the House. And we call on all members, especially small island states, to recognize that this is protecting the principles of the Charter. Might is not right. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Antigua and Barbuda. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Ghana. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, colleagues, let me begin by first of all thanking the respective leadership of the President of the General Assembly and the Secretary General for convening this emergency special session of the General Assembly to consider the grave threat to international peace and security as a result of the Russian Federation's aggression against Ukraine, a member of this organization. We have met here under the shadows of the dark clouds of war in Europe, which test the resolve of our diplomacy and our collective ability to turn the instruments of war into pillars of peace. The situation we are faced with in Ukraine is grave, and we all must acknowledge that. The foundations of trust that have made the Charter of the United Nations the indispensable instrument of the international order 
have been assailed in a reckless manner. In action on our part in roundly condemning the actions of the Russian Federation and reaffirming our support for the charter of our organization and its collective security mechanism would further undermine the pillars that have held our world together, regardless of its imperfection. Indeed, across this hall and throughout our organization's history, there's enough blame to go around. When it has suited powerful states, the charter has been thrown out of the window and unilateral actions have been taken without due regard. However, when old wounds are opened, it will bleed just as fresh wounds. It is in this regard and conscious that there is never enough blame to make us stand neutral to the cause of peace and the preservation of our United Nations, that we deem it our duty to make all efforts for peace. The Charter is our beacon of hope, and where states sail off the turbulent waters of war and destruction, we must point them back to the lighthouse of peace. Mr. President, as I said in the Security Council on Sunday afternoon, after the adoption of the resolution for this emergency special session of the General Assembly, it is important that we come into this debate with sobriety. This is not just our obligation to the present generation and the civilization we have fashioned for our contemporary world. It is the debt and respect we owe to all those whose blood and toil speak to us from the many graves of the two world wars. We must mean it when we say, never again in our lifetimes and in succeeding generations should the world be put through the scourge of war. The Security Council was constrained from acting, and it is now our responsibility as an assembly to act, and act we must. We should therefore support the call for peace. From this hall, the Russian Federation must hear our call for an immediate ceasefire, a withdrawal of its troops from Ukraine, and a recommitment to diplomacy and dialogue. The parties to the conflict must respect the principles of international law international humanitarian law and human rights law. The interests of civilian populations must be placed above all else. And humanitarian agencies must be granted safe corridors to assist those most in need, especially children, women, and the aged. In this regard, I know the dire situation of 90 Ghanaian students and others in Sumi, Ukraine, and urge a humanitarian pause for them and others in similar situations to leave Ukraine with the support of the UN agencies and the International Federation of the Red Cross. Like many others in this organization, Ghana enjoys long-standing relations of friendship with the Russian Federation. But we have been forthright in our condemnation. It takes true friendship to be candid with one another on matters of principles and values, to expect behavior that greatness requires. The Russian Federation may well have had its security concerns, but it chose to express its concern in the wrong way. Threatening the use of force is wrong and unacceptable. Threatening aggression is wrong and unacceptable. And attacking a neighbor under pretext is wrong and unacceptable. The path of war is not the way one should establish its national positions. And it is not an option this assembly can accept. In condemning the aggression of the Russian Federation, however, we should not close off the path of dialogue. Ours is the vocation of peace. We must therefore recommit ourselves to dialogue to ensure that this war is ended and as soon as possible. We are horrified by the brutal attacks in Ukraine regret the many innocent lives that have been lost, and are pained by the needless loss from a war that was not necessary. We therefore call on Ukraine, the Russian Federation, and all other parties to give an opportunity for the dialogue that since yesterday commenced at the borders of Belarus, without compromising Ukraine's inalienable rights as a sovereign and independent nation. For Ghana, there is no doubt that our commitment to Ukraine is total in the preservation of its sovereignty, political independence, and territorial integrity. We hope 
that the adoption of this resolution will make all parties to understand that there's no option other than dialogue in addressing the critical situation we are confronted with in Ukraine. Let us therefore say our bit in this hall, but also deeply reflect on how outside of this hall in our own capitals and in other capitals we can recommit the parties to dialogue and diplomacy to avert the catastrophe of war. We have a responsibility to act as a purveyors of peace, and that time is now. I thank you very much, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Ghana. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Federated States of Micronesia. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, we align ourselves with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum members. We endorse the efforts of the Secretary General on the situation in Ukraine. I would like to make these few points in my national capacity. The events on the ground in Ukraine have dramatically worsened. In addition to the tensions in the eastern part of Ukraine, we are now seeing a full-fledged invasion of a sovereign nation, an attack from a member of this organization on that of another member. This act is in full contravention to international law and the principles of our UN Charter. This is not a peacekeeping mission, but a war of aggression. It is clear beyond any doubt who is the aggressor and the victim. Mr. President, war has a human face, and there are no winners. It is with horror that we witness children, women, and civilians fall victim to this conflict. We deplore this indiscriminate act. We call for the immediate cessation of hostilities and the immediate withdrawal of Russian forces out of the sovereign territory of Ukraine and its internationally recognized borders, and their immediate return to the barracks. We further call that rapid, safe, and unhindered access to humanitarian assistance and safe passage be provided to the re Ukrainian population and others seeking it. Mr. President, Micronesia is a small, and peace-loving country. The principles of our nation's constitution, which unites our Micronesian island nation and its people, are closely related to the principles of the United Nations Charter. We are encouraged by the strong expressions and actions of the United Nations, particularly those directed at the protection of human rights as well as under humanitarian law and the prevention and suppression of armed conflict. We are thus deeply concerned by the abhorrent acts of the Russian Federation. I cannot overstress our determination to stand united with the people of Ukraine. In solidarity, the Federated States of Micronesia, as announced days ago, by our president has severe diplomatic relations with the Russian Federation. Mr. President, diplomatic negotiations are needed in good faith and on equal terms if peace is to have a chance. We urge parties to take the path for peaceful dialogue. We draw inspiration from the strength and resilience of the of the Ukrainian people 
in the face of overwhelming forces. Micronesia stands in solidarity with them, and we have co-sponsored and will vote in favor of the draft resolution, Aggression Against Ukraine. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Federated States of Micronesia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Australia. Mr. President, Secretary General, colleagues, but particularly our dear friend, the Ambassador of Ukraine. My government could not have made its position more clear. Australia condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's unprovoked, egregious and completely unjustified aggression against Ukraine. As our Prime Minister has said, there is no pretext. There is no provocation. There is no just cause that Russia is seeking to pursue. These are unilateral hostile actions. Mr. President, the UN Charter, it says, we the peoples of the United Nations committed to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. Yet, Russia has chosen war. We strongly reject any assertions or excuses that Russia's actions are motivated by humanitarian concerns. We call Russia's actions for what they are, a brutal invasion and a direct attack on the people of Ukraine. President Putin and the Kremlin have ignored repeated high-level calls to engage in genuine reciprocal dialogue over security concerns. As our Foreign Minister has said, and I quote, the assertion by President Putin of Russian soldiers acting as peacekeepers is an obscene perversion of the noble and vital role that generations of peacekeepers have played across the world. Russia's actions are deplorable. Russia's actions are reckless and destructive. Russia's actions are a wholesale breach of international law. Mr. President, let's be clear. Russia is violating its obligations under the UN Charter, including, most obviously, to refrain from using force against another state. Australia welcomed the significant efforts that were made by our close partners, including the United States, the EU and NATO, to urge a diplomatic solution. Unfortunately, those efforts have failed for now. But we are determined to uh, continue uh, to work closely within the UN and with responsible nations worldwide to ensure Russia's actions incur both the international condemnation and the high cost that they deserve. We welcome the significant steps taken by our partners, including the US, the UK, the EU, Canada, and Japan. We also welcome the increasing number of firm statements and practical offers of support to Ukraine, uh, both in Europe and in our own region of the Indo-Pacific. The Australian government has announced a range of sanctions that impose real costs on Moscow, reflecting the grave nature of Russia's conduct. Australia has sanctioned more than 350 Russian individuals, including corrupt oligarchs, MPs and military commanders who are facilitating Putin's illegal and violent ambitions. 
We have sanctioned 13 Belarusian individuals and entities who have aided and abetted Putin's aggression. We're also supporting Ukraine and its people. We're working with NATO and other partners to provide lethal as well as non-lethal military equipment, medical supplies and financial assistance to support the people of Ukraine. At the outset, Australia contributed $3 million to NATO's trust fund for Ukraine to support non-lethal military equipment and medical supplies. Overnight, our Prime Minister announced a further $50 million to support both lethal and non-lethal defensive support for Ukraine working with our partners. In addition, the Prime Minister announced an initial contribution of $25 million to provide uh, humanitarian support to international organisations to help meet essential needs and to provide shelter, food, medical care and water. But this is just our opening contribution. We know that needs will continue to rise and we stand ready to help. We call on all parties to adhere to international human rights and humanitarian law to ensure the protection of civilians. Mr President, Australia has been and will always be a steadfast supporter of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Our thoughts are with Ukraine. Ukrainians are enduring a terrible invasion. The bombs fall, the shelling continues, the bullets are fired. Special forces from Russia are moving towards Kyiv and tanks are rolling in all around their borders. We reiterate our call to stop this violation. We seek immediate withdrawal of the Russian military. We seek the cessation of this military action. We call for peace, a peace that is not just the absence of law, but that enables the people of Ukraine to live according to their own rules, according to their own sovereignty, and to have their own freedom. As the Secretary General said last week, colleagues, the decisions of the coming days will shape our world and directly affect the lives of millions. Now is the time for us all, the peoples of the United Nations, to unite our strength to maintain international peace and security. Australia will co-sponsor the resolution Australia will vote yes on the resolution condemning Russia's aggression. Colleagues, now is the time to act, to act together. Thank you, colleagues. I thank the distinguished representative of Australia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Guyana. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, the government of Guyana fully aligns itself with the statements issued by the Caribbean community on the 14th and 24th of February, and with the declaration of the Organization of American States of the 25th of February on the situation in Ukraine, and wishes to re-emphasize the following. The government of Guyana is gravely concerned over the recent military intervention by Russia in violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and calls for an immediate cessation of hostilities and a return to diplomacy. 
Guyana deplores the threat or use of force in the conduct of international relations and urges a peaceful resolution of the differences that currently exist in consonance with the rule of international law and the provisions of the United Nations Charter. Mr. President, the current military action in Ukraine is contrary to the principles of respect for territorial integrity, sovereignty, and the non-interference in the internal affairs of another sovereign state. The aggression against Ukraine is a threat to the region and countries everywhere. The government of Guyana therefore supports the efforts of the United Nations Secretary General to bring a speedy resolution to the situation in Ukraine and cease the threat to international peace and security. In this regard, the government of Guyana fully supports the resolution before us. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Guyana. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Jamaica. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Thank you for convening this emergency special session of the General Assembly during which we are considering the unfolding situation in Ukraine. Jamaica strongly condemns the military incursion into Ukraine by the Russian Federation. We call for the immediate and complete withdrawal of Russian military forces from the territory of Ukraine. Jamaica considers that the military action by Russia in Ukraine violates the principles enshrined in the UN Charter, both in word and in spirit. It undermines the core principles of respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, the non-interference in the affairs of sovereign states, and the obligation to refrain from the threat or use of force. Jamaica considers that these are non-negotiable obligations to which all of us as member states of this United Nations have subscribed. Mr. President, Russia's actions over the last few days are deemed as seriously egregious and unjustifiable, especially given its position as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, the very body mandated to maintain international peace and security. By its actions, Russia is in clear violation of its solemn duties and responsibilities as a permanent member of the Security Council and member of the UN family. We therefore call on Russia to cease all acts of aggression and open all channels of diplomacy to resolve this dispute peacefully. The global rules-based multilateral system will be under threat if we do nothing. As a small island state, Jamaica recognizes that the international legal framework and the principles of the UN Charter are designed to provide a safe environment for all nations, regardless of size and stature. We cannot allow this international order to be cast aside and ignored with impunity. Inaction by the global community would be most egregious. We must stand up for right, for law, for peace, and demand the urgent cessation of hostilities in Ukraine and the return to dialogue and diplomacy. As members of the United Nations, we have all committed to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war that has too often brought untold sorrow to mankind. 
the ongoing incursions in Ukraine are a violation of that sacred promise. Military conflict has grave implications for us all. Jamaica notes with grave concern the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Ukraine and the impact on neighboring countries and call on all parties to ensure that displaced persons, both Ukrainian and non-citizens, and including students and expatriates, are allowed safe and unfettered passage to destinations outside Ukraine if they so desire. In this regard, we welcome the Secretary General's announcement earlier of the measures being undertaken to address these humanitarian concerns. Jamaica reaffirms the view that respect for the principles of international law and the UN Charter remain fundamental to the maintenance of international peace and security. It is only in such an environment that we, the peoples, can continue to work to address and counter the most pressing challenges that confront the world today and in the future. Mr. President, as small states, we see too clearly the dangers of war. We feel too well the threat of disruption of lives, livelihoods, and economic devastation and stagnation. In that sense, today, we are all Ukraine. We too are fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. In that sense too, today, we are all Ukraine. In the eternal and inspiring words of Bob Marley, therefore, let us get up, stand up, stand up for the rights of all the people of Ukraine, because today, we are all Ukraine. I thank you. I now I thank the distinguished representative of Jamaica. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Luxembourg. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, le Luxembourg souscrit Luxembourg pleinement la déclaration faite hier par l'Union européenne. Permettez-moi de la compléter par des considérations internationales. Face au fracas de la guerre, nous capacity. devons tous, membres des Nations war, Unies, faire we, entendre the notre voix. Au moment où heard. les forces armées russes continuent de bombarder the les villes ukrainiennes et de briser les villes, Ukrainian towns and to break the lives of an increasing number of humans, men, women and children in Ukraine. And at that time I would like to restate the full solidarity of Luxembourg with the government and people of Ukraine. Like her European partners, Luxembourg condemns in the strongest possible terms Russia's aggression against Ukraine. My country resolutely supports the independence, unity, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders in line with the resolutions of the General Assembly. The brutal, unprovoked, unjustified, criminal aggression carried out by the Russian Federation against Ukraine, a founding member of the United Nations, is not just an attack on the independence, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. This aggression also calls into question the very principles of the United Nations, multilateralism and the international order founded on the rule of law and the sovereign quality of states. In the face of such a situ serious situation, what can we do as the United Nations? Because of Russia's veto, the Security Council was not able to take the decisions incumbent upon it to fulfill its main responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security.
Nous le déplorons vivement. We deplore alors that. Le projet de résolution This came at a time when the draft resolution presented last Friday by Albania and the United States had the support de de of more than 80 de member states monde. from around the world. Le Luxembourg est reconnaissant aux membres Luxembourg du Conseil de sécurité qui ont voté avant-hier en faveur de la résolution 2623 et de la convocation de cette Emergency Special Session of the General Assembly to take place. It is now incumbent upon the General Assembly to fulfill its responsibilities. Luxembourg is a co-sponsor and will vote in favor of the draft resolution entitled Aggression Against Ukraine. Il s'agit d'une résolution forte qui exige de la Russie qu'elle cesse immédiatement de demander la force contre l'Ukraine, qu'elle s'abstienne de toute autre menace d'utilisation illégale de la force contre tout État membre des Nations Unies, et qu'elle retire immédiatement it withdraw immediately, completely, and unconditionally all of its military forces from Ukraine, from within Ukraine's internationally recognized borders. The resolution also demands the immediate peaceful settlement of the conflict between the Russian Federation and Ukraine via political dialogue, negotiation, mediation and other peaceful means. Colleagues, voting in favour of this resolution means voting to stop the war, voting to uphold the Charter of the United Nations and international law, voting to uphold the rule of law rather than the rule of the strongest. It means voting to save lives, to save the population in Ukraine under attack from Russia. We call on all member states to vote in favour of this draft resolution when it is put to the vote. Nous sommes à un moment Mr. President, pour la sécurité we are at a critical juncture for security and stability in Europe and around the world. As hier, the Secretary General stressed yesterday, nothing can justify the use of nuclear, nuclear weapons. Nous condamnons we condemn Belarus' involvement in, in the aggression targeted at Ukraine, in particular by making its territory available to the Russian armed forces. We demand that Russia droit and Belarus instantly comply with international law. Crimes should not go Cela unpunished. This is particularly true for war crimes and crimes against humanity. In this respect, Luxembourg welcomes the announcement yesterday by the Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court that an investigation will be opened imminently into the situation in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has a considerable impact on the civilian population, in particular the most vulnerable. Older people, women and children are paying a very high price. The violations and attacks on human rights are multiplying. Luxembourg supports the efforts within the Human Rights Council to adopt a resolution setting up an international independent commission of inquiry on Ukraine. We call on Russia to stop targeting civilians and civilian infrastructure, including schools and hospitals. We call on Russia to conform with the provisional measures that were indicated to it today to this effect by the European Court of Human Rights. All possible measures should be taken by the parties to protect civilians, including children, humanitarian personnel, and also in civilian infrastructure. International humanitarian law must be respected. Luxembourg expresses its greatest humanitarian possible concern about the humanitarian situation in Ukraine and the increase in the number of internally displaced persons and refugees. My country joins the European and international solidarity here and has decided to make available to its humanitarian partners immediate aid of 1 million euros. The authorities of Luxembourg are also preparing to 
pour héberger les réfugiés qui fuient la guerre en Ukraine. Ukraine. Nous prendrons toute notre part We dans cet effort de solidarité. Nous saluons efforts. la générosité And we hail dont the font preuve les pays voisins de l'Ukraine en accueillant Ukraine, déjà des centaines de milliers de réfugiés. Of refugees. Le gouvernement luxembourgeois a décidé de répondre à la demande des autorités ukrainiennes et de leur fournir du matériel de sauvetage et de médicaments à travers le mécanisme européen de protection civile protection mechanism, ainsi que des équipements as well as with equipment pour renforcer to build la capacité Ukraine's de l'Ukraine à se défendre. Le Luxembourg appuie pleinement Luxembourg les mesures restrictives adoptées par l'Union européenne à l'égard de la Russie et les mesures européennes de soutien à l'Ukraine. Avec nos partenaires européens, nous continuerons à soutenir l'Ukraine sur la base des valeurs de respect de la dignité humaine, de liberté, dignity, freedom, de démocratie, d'égalité, de l'état de droit, ainsi que le respect des droits de l'homme et le respect pour les droits humains que nous tous partageons. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues, le destin de l'Ukraine est notre destin. Le destin de l'Ukraine est le destin de l'ordre international fondé sur les règles de droit. Nous saluons le courage du Président de l'Ukraine, du gouvernement et du peuple ukrainien qui se battent aujourd'hui pour les valeurs universelles sur lesquelles les Nations Unies That the United Nations was founded on. We also hail the courage of Russian citizens who are showing their opposition to the war, despite the repression of which they are targets. Like them, we say to the leaders of the Russian Federation, and I will now switch to the language of Pushkin to Russian, no to war, stop this war. Chers collègues, Colleagues, aujourd'hui, nous sommes tous Ukrainiens. Nous sommes tous Ukrainiens. Ukrainiens peut compter Ukraine sur notre soutien. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie. Je vous remercie, le représentant de Luxembourg. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Papua New Guinea. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, Papua New Guinea feels the pain and the hurt the people and the government of Ukraine are feeling at this trying hour and we stand in unity and solidarity with all Ukrainians in their court-given motherland. We welcome today's emergency special session of the General Assembly and express our appreciation to the Security Council members who made it possible today. This should, however, not have been the case had the very Security Council entrusted and mandated under the UN Charter for ensuring global peace and security not failed us to live up to its core responsibilities in the context of Ukraine. We are disappointed that some members of the Council whom we have entrusted our support in good faith for them to uphold the sacrosanct principles of the UN Charter in the Council have failed us. Looking the other way, at a critical moment concerning our member states, peace and security, and also global peace and security, is not what we expected of council members, given that they do not only represent their own delegation's interest in the Security Council. It is time such as this that yet again brings to the fore and underscores the agency for the long overdue reforms of the veto power and the archaic Security Council that remains a prisoner of its past to the detriment of our collective security, as has been regrettably witnessed in Ukraine today. Mr. President, Papua New Guinea as a small developing country depends on the respect 
for a rules-based international order under international law, including the UN Charter. The importance of upholding this for all countries is fundamental for peaceful coexistence and international relations. No country, respective of the economic, financial, military clout, has any right to coerce others in shape or form. It is in this spirit that Papua New Guinea is deeply concerned by Russian Federation's aggressive attack on the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine. We strongly deplore their actions. This must cease forthwith as it contravenes the UN Charter and international law, particularly in the context of a permanent member of the Security Council, as has been rightly underscored by the Secretary General of the United Nations and many other speakers, delegations. We urge for Russia to withdraw immediately and conditionally from Ukraine. We also encourage both parties to use full peaceful dialogue through diplomacy to resolve their differences. We therefore welcome the efforts underway for dialogue and call for a safety and security guarantees for the peacemakers. Rebuilding trust, confidence, and mutual respect between all concerned parties cannot be at the expense of accountability of actions and actors involved in this conflict. We also urge for safe passage for humanitarian relief workers and suppliers to those in need of such assistance in Ukraine and adjacent countries and convey our gratitude for their selfless work in a perilous environment. We also thank neighboring countries of Ukraine for opening their borders and hearts to receive Ukrainians and others seeking refuge. Mr. President, it is for all this rationale that my country, Papua New Guinea, unreservedly supports the Secretary General for being frank and forthright on this issue. This is the right thing to do. We also fully support and endorse and co-sponsor the General Assembly resolution on Ukraine before us today, just as we also did for the Security Council resolution last Friday and welcome the Uniting for Peace Council resolution last Saturday. In closing, Mr. President, we also align ourselves with the remarks, with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Islands Forum. And I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Papua New Guinea. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Timor Leste. Mr. President, Excellencies, Timor Leste is very concerned with the current situation in Ukraine. As one of the last members who joined the United Nations in the last 20 years, Timor Leste always believed in the standards set by the United Nations Charter that every state should uphold international law, which govern the rule-based rule order respecting territorial integrity and sovereignty of other states. What we have been witnessing in the past few days are actions taken against international humanitarian and human rights law, as this situation has escalated into a full war and has taken a heavy toll on the civilian population. For that very reason, Timor Leste co sponsored the Security Council draft resolution calling for an end to this situation, which ultimately was not adopted by the Council. And now, Mr. President, it is the General Assembly duty to stand up and defend the core foundation of the United Nations. Timor Leste once again reaffirms its commitment to upholding the principle of international law 
and the UN Charter by co-sponsoring and fully supporting the draft resolution of the General Assembly entitled Aggression Against Ukraine. Mr. President, Timor Leste understands the pain and suffering caused by a military attack, as we have experienced it ourselves. As a nation that came from the assets of forced occupation for years, Timor Leste knows that war brings benefit to no one. We therefore urge parties to the conflict to agree to an immediate ceasefire and to pursue a diplomatic solution. While maintaining peace and security has become the most crucial task of this organization, we must protect the civilian population and create conditions for peace. We thank the Secretary General and the all UN agencies and partners for their continued support to the civilian population through its humanitarian uh, operation efforts. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Timor Leste. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. President, Excellencies, at the outset, St. Vincent and the Grenadines expresses its deepest condolences to the families of the victims who have lost their lives due to the special military operation launched by the Russian Federation in the independent territory of Ukraine. We continue to monitor the escalation of the conflict and are deeply worried by the deterioration deteriorating situation. From our perspective, the special military operation is neither necessary nor desirable and is an affront to the United Nations Charter. Given the historical context of the geopolitical situation in the region and Russia's articulation of its legitimate security concerns, and perspective on the political situation in the Donbass region, we acknowledge the need for constructive diplomatic efforts that thoroughly address these concerns. The special military operation, however, cannot reasonably be justified. It, it, it only endangers international peace and security and will exacerbate human suffering across the globe. Let us be clear, no member state of our organization will be immune from the ripple effect of this armed conflict. Mr. President, St. Vincent and the Grenadines is unwaveringly committed to the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter, including those relating to Article 2, Subsection 4, which prohibit the threat or use a force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state, as well as non-interference in the internal affairs of states and the right to self-determination. Our existence as a sovereign and independent small nation is owed to these international sacrosanct, sacrosanct norms and non-negotiable timeless principles. Accordingly, we cannot stand askance while the bedrock principles of international law are being jettisoned and call for the immediate cessation of all hostilities. We specifically urge the strict adherence to the principles of sovereignty, political independence, territorial integrity, non-intervention, non-interference, respect for human rights and international humanitarian law. Equally, we reiterate the recent calls 
made by the Caribbean community, CARICOM, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, for the Pacific Settlements of Disputes and the Respect of Ukraine's Sovereignty and Territorial Integrity. Mr. President, historically, the Russian Federation has been a defender of the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter, inclusive of the sacred principle of the peaceful settlement of disputes. This is emblematic of its membership in the Group of Friends in Defense of the United Nations Charter. As a fellow defender of these principles and member of this group, St. Vincent and the Grenadines unequivocally insists that the Russian Federation cease its military operations and immediately withdraw its forces from Ukraine. On countless occasions, we have witnessed the insidious effects of interventionism and external aggressions across the developing world. And we know that constructive dialogue in adherence to international law is the only path to peace and progress, however difficult that path may be. We deeply regret that the Minsk agreements have been violated. We also make an appeal for meaningful diplomatic initiatives and encourage the furtherance of the work of the Normandy format, the trilateral contact group, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. We urge the parties to exhaust all diplomatic efforts to find a peaceful solution to the current conflict. We firmly believe that the nobility of peace is far preferable than an ignoble military adventure. History has taught us that peace is a great cause, and great causes have never been won by doubtful men and women. While we are encouraged by the recent meeting that was held on the Belarusian border between both sides, we must put on record that the use of nuclear weapons is inconceivable and wholly unacceptable. We counsel against the mere suggestion by anyone. We counsel further that space for continued dialogue must remain open. Before I conclude, Mr. President, I would, it will be remiss of me not to express my dismay for the disturbing reports that people of African descent are being singled out to unfair treatment as they join the masses fleeing the Ukrainian territory. In line with international humanitarian law and its guiding principles, we call on all states to uphold their international obligations and ensure the safety of all peoples. In conclusion, Mr. President, St. Vincent and the Grenadines repeats that it is a stout champion of the purposes and principles of the United Nations Charter and their primacy in our multilateral system. We must, and I repeat, we must give peace a real chance to succeed. We must stop this war and return to diplomacy. Thank you, and peace profound to all. I thank the distinguished representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Monaco. Monsieur le Président de l'Assemblée Générale, President of the General Assembly, je tiens tout d'abord à rappeler que la principauté de Monaco s'est associée à la déclaration de l'Union européenne représentée hier le 28 février. 
Je tiens à réaffirmer du haut de cette tribune l'attachement de mon pays au respect du droit international et de la Charte des Nations Unies. Dans cette enceinte, chaque étoile dispose d'une voix, conformément au principe de l'égalité souveraine, Monaco tient à utiliser la sienne pour soutenir l'Ukraine. Remplir de bonne foi les obligations de la Charte, Committing to the charter régler les in good différences faith, par les moyens pacifiques, ne pas porter atteinte à l'intégrité territoriale d'un État, sont des principes fondamentaux the fundamental auxquels tout État membre s'est engagé state en devenant membre de l'Organisation des Nations Unies. Monsieur le Président, nous déplorons Mr. le nombre important de victimes et sommes extrêmement préoccupés pour les populations déplacées qui fuient la violence, ainsi que pour les plus de 600 000 personnes qui sont déjà les réfugiées. Face à l'aggravation rapide de la situation et à la souffrance imposée aux civils, nous appelons au respect du droit international humanitaire et rappelons que les conventions de Genève et leurs protocoles additionnels additional protocols entre la population civile et les combattants et interdit de prendre des civils pour cible. Using civilians as targets. Nous appelons aussi à l'accès sans entrave de l'assistance humanitaire. Nous demeurons convaincus que le dialogue fondé sur le droit international, international les principes et les valeurs de la Charte peuvent seuls fournir une issue à cette guerre qui nous concerne tous. This war that concerns all of us. Cela peut sembler futile, mais le 2 décembre 2021, l'Assemblée générale a adopté la résolution sur la Trêve olympique, alors que les Jeux paralympiques d'hiver s'ouvrent à Pékin ce 4 mars 2022, nous dénonçons la violation de ce symbole d'amitié et de fraternité entre nous. Friendship and fraternity Monaco défend between le peoples. système multilatéral Monaco et plaide pour la paix. And advocates peace. Monaco co-parraine le projet de résolution intitulé « Agression contre l'Ukraine » qui est soumis à la considération de l'Assemblée générale General réunie en session extraordinaire d'urgence. Monaco, Monaco votera en faveur de ce texte. Favor of this text. I thank the distinguished representative of Monaco I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Spain. Señor Presidente, España suscribe y apoya la declaración realizada por el delegado de la Unión Europea en nombre de la Unión y de sus Estados Unidos. Señor Presidente, la Asamblea General está reunida porque el Consejo de Seguridad se ha visto bloqueado por el veto de la Federación Rusa para cumplir las tareas de mantenimiento de la paz y arreglo pacífico de controversias que le encomienda la Cámara. Agradecemos a los miembros del Consejo de Seguridad que han hecho posible esta sesión especial de la Asamblea. Y corresponde ahora a todos los Estados miembros defender la paz, defender la Carta y defender Naciones Unidas. Al ejercer su veto, Rusia ha explicado que lo hace para mantener el equilibrio de intereses de los miembros permanentes del Consejo. Es más importante ese equilibrio de intereses interpretado por uno solo de los miembros permanentes que los principios y valores de la Carta de Naciones Unidas son todos los Estados miembros de Naciones Unidas igualmente soberanos o hay algunos más iguales que otros con derecho a imponer unilateralmente su interpretación de la Carta. España deplora la utilización del veto por parte de Rusia que ha impedido que saliera adelante la resolución copatrocinada por 82 Estados miembros, entre ellos España. El veto es anacrónico y debe desaparecer. La defensa de un orden internacional basada en el derecho internacional y los principios y valores de la Carta no pueden quedar condicionados al ejercicio del La resolución que esta Asamblea debate y que España copatrocina 
tiene como objetivo la independencia y soberanía de Ucrania, invadida por la Federación Rusa con la colaboración de Bielorrusia. Tiene como objetivo la defensa de la paz y del arreglo pacífico y diplomático de las controversias. Y tiene también como objetivo defender la razón de ser de nuestra organización multilateral Naciones Unidas. Señor Presidente, España condena inequívocamente la invasión rusa de Ucrania. Reconocemos la soberanía, la independencia y la integridad territorial de Ucrania en sus fronteras reconocidas internacionalmente. Y expresamos nuestra admiración por quienes se movilizan contra esta guerra en la Federación Rusa. Han pasado las horas y los días desde el ataque de la Federación Rusa contra Ucrania. Pero Ucrania resiste y sigue resistiendo ante la admiración del mundo, consciente de la desigualdad en esta lucha. Cada minuto que lo hace, se desvanecen en el aire las justificaciones de plomo de los atacantes. ¿Cómo se puede negar, en nombre de un imperio derrocado por los propios ciudadanos rusos, el derecho a la independencia de Ucrania, al tiempo que se la agrede en nombre de la independencia de las regiones del mundo? ¿Cómo se puede alegar intereses de seguridad unilaterales, declarando el estado de alarma de las fuerzas tácticas nucleares, que es la mayor amenaza imaginable contra la seguridad colectiva? Como si no fueran suficientes todas estas razones para votar a favor de la resolución que se presenta ante la Asamblea General, ¿se imagina a alguien qué esperanza quedaría para un cese el fuego y la vía diplomática si esta resolución no obtuviera una mayoría abrumadora? ¿Cree alguien de verdad que continuarán los contactos en condiciones entre los representantes de Ucrania y la Federación Rusa en Gómez? ¿Que será posible situar bajo el amparo de la Carta y las Naciones Unidas unas futuras negociaciones sobre un sistema de seguridad colectiva y de desarrollo? Es más, la acción humanitaria para ayudar sin condiciones a todas las víctimas de esta guerra, ¿qué sustento moral tendría ¿Cómo se financiaría y protegería? ¿Qué apoyo tendría el ofrecimiento de los buenos oficios imprescindibles del secretario general? Señor presidente, estimados colegas, basta de Hacemos un llamamiento urgente al alto el fuego inmediato de la retirada de las tropas rusas de Ucrania. Hay que recuperar la vía diplomática que estaba abierta hasta el Consejo de Seguridad del pasado 23 de febrero. Los contactos entre Ucrania y la Federación Rusa deben conducir a una negociación diplomática que, con los buenos oficios del secretario general Guterres, conduzca al fin del conflicto de una paz duradera. La resolución que se pondrá a votación en esta Asamblea General, con todas sus limitaciones y virtudes, se ha convertido en el símbolo de esperanza de un futuro basado en el multilateralismo, en la igualdad soberana de los Estados, en el arreglo pacífico de controversias y en la paz. Se ha convertido en un testimonio concreto de la Carta de Naciones Unidas, un futuro que nos merece. Votemos todos a favor de la resolución. Muchas gracias. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Belize. Mr. President, Excellencies, all members of the United Nations are obligated to refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia is a blatant breach of Russia's obligation under the United Nations Charter. It constitutes an unacceptable violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and contravenes Article 2.4 of the UN Charter and the norms and principles of international law. The attack by Russia on the Republic of Ukraine is therefore an attack on the Charter and an attack on the international system. We therefore strongly and inequivocally condemn the Russian illegal attack on Ukraine and its gross violation of international law. Mr. President, we are extremely concerned about the devastating impact 
that this illegal war is having on the lives of Ukrainians. Already, loss of life, disruption of livelihoods, destruction of property and terror are occurring in the Republic of Ukraine. War leaves permanent cars on society. The impact is being felt especially hard by women and children, the elderly and persons with disability. A generation of Ukrainians will be lost and families forever destroyed. Mr. President, we need to consider a situation of war in the 21st century. We all agreed to leave wars behind when the Second World War ended and the international community created the United Nations Organization to ensure that the peoples of the world would never again suffer the scourge of war. We all agreed to and signed the United Nations Charter and committed to uphold its principles. We created an organization to provide a forum where the tools for peaceful settlement of disputes are available for all member states. A forum where diplomacy and international law should prevail over armed conflict. We remain resolute that all states must respect and adhere to the principle of the Charter of the United Nations and the norms of international law, which are fundamental to the maintenance of international system and peace and security, including respect for sovereignty, territorial integrity within international recognized borders, non-interference in the internal affairs of another state, and the prohibition and the threat or use of force for the resolution of disputes. Mr. President, in unison with the sentiment expressed by others, we call for an immediate cessation of hostilities, the withdrawal of all Russian troops and military hardware from the occupied territories in Ukraine. We urge all sides to res exercise restraint, allow the safe passage of all civilians, comply with international humanitarian law, and to resort to diplomacy to find a solution to this international armed conflict. Belize stands in solidarity with Ukraine and its people who are enduring the tragedy of war. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Belize. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of South Africa. Mr. President, Excellencies, South Africa remains deeply concerned by the escalation of the conflict in Ukraine. We welcome the commencement of talks between Ukraine and Russia. We hope that these discussions will lead to a diplomatic solution that will result in a sustainable political solution. South Africa is of the view that this armed conflict, like all others, will result in unnecessary human suffering and destruction with global ramifications. In situations of conflict, the most vulnerable tend to suffer the most during and post the conflict. It is regrettable that at the time when the world is struggling to emerge from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic, we assist with a conflict that will further delay the world's recovery. The UN Secretary General Guterres reminded us of this when he stated that the conflict will have a huge impact on the global economy in a moment when we are emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic and so many developing countries need to have the space for recovery. The UN was founded after the, many, after the horrors of the Second World War with the aim of saving succeeding generations from the scourge of war. It is for this reason that the Charter of the United Nations enjoins all member states to settle their disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace, security, and justice are not endangered. 
Mr. President, we stress that peace is best built through diplomacy and dialogue within the framework of the institutions of global dialogue, especially the United Nations. It is important for all nations to respect and uphold the principles of international law, including international humanitarian law and the provisions of the UN Charter. The UN is now in its 76th year of existence, and the events of the last two weeks have again reminded us of the urgent need to reform the UN, especially the UN Security Council, which is long overdue. We need a council free from the legacy of the Cold War so that it can genuinely be the space where the community of nations come together to resolve conflict and build a more just and peaceful world. Mr. President, South Africa always appreciates the value that dialogue has in averting a crisis and de-escalating conflict. This is in line with our strong commitment to the peaceful resolution of conflict. In this regard, we also urge the Security Council to utilize existing tools at its disposal in support of the Pacific settlements of disputes. We also believe that the good offices of the UN Secretary General could make a positive contribution in finding a lasting solution to this conflict and should be utilized. We, we urge all parties to approach the situation in a spirit of compromise, with all sides upholding human rights abiding by their obligations under the international law and international humanitarian law. A diplomatic solution to the problem should address the security concerns of the parties. South Africa continues to support and encourage regional initiatives such as the Minsk agreements, and we welcome the work of the Normandy format, the trilateral contact group, and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Mr. President, this meeting has been held under the Uniting for Peace formula, which requires the General Assembly to meet if and when the Security Council is unable to act. However, it remains necessary for the Security Council to exercise its responsibility fully in the current situation. The situation in Ukraine should not be allowed, Mr. President, to affect negatively other priorities of the international community and the rest of the work of the United Nations. We therefore note with concern that not all situations of conflict have received the same attention. Indeed, while there is this focus on Ukraine, long-standing situations that the Security Council is seized with continue without resolution. It is necessary that we devote equal attention to other long-standing conflicts where the UN Charter and the human rights are being violated. In conclusion, South Africa endorses the statement issued by the African Union Commission expressing concern that the treatment, at the treatment given to African nationals and people of African descent at the borders of Ukraine some of whom are not allowed to cross and move to safety. We urge European countries to take steps to resolve the situation, as all people have a right to cross international borders during times of conflict. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of South Africa. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Gabon. Monsieur le Président, 
Nous sommes réunis aujourd'hui pour envoyer un message clair au peuple du monde. Notre message est que les Nations Unies sont contre la guerre. En le faisant, nous sommes dans notre rôle. Cette organisation a été créé pour préserver les générations présentes et futures du spectre de la guerre. C'est la substance des premiers mots de la Charte des Nations Unies. L'Assemblée générale doit condamner sans nuance la guerre contre l'Ukraine. Elle doit condamner toutes les guerres de choix, toutes les guerres d'influence, toutes les guerres d'hégémonie. Toutes les guerres de prédation de ressources, toutes les guerres injustes et déshumanisantes. Partout où la sécurité et la dignité des peuples du monde est bafouée, cette Assemblée générale doit faire entendre sa voix avec force et vigueur. Au moment où nous tenons cette réunion, les armes crépitent en Ukraine. Le sang écoule. Des milliers de civils innocents, hommes, femmes et enfants, fuient leurs maisons, leurs villes, leurs pays pour trouver refuge ailleurs. Notre message, en tant que membre de la communauté internationale, doit être sans équivoque dans le rejet de la belligérance jusqu'à ce que le spectre de la confrontation s'éloigne et que se dressent des perspectives judicieuses de la résolution pacifique du conflit. Nous avons le devoir d'offrir une alternative à la peur. Il est encore temps. Il est toujours temps de choisir le dialogue et la diplomatie à la logique de la force. Le Gabon est fermement attaché à la paix. Mon pays est attaché au respect de l'intégrité territoriale et à la souveraineté nationale de chaque membre des Nations Unies. Mon pays croit au multilatéralisme, à la solidarité internationale et à un ordre international fondé sur les règles et non sur la loi du plus fort. Au nom de ces valeurs et principes de la Charte des Nations Unies, qui confère à notre organisation toute sa pertinence et sa noblesse, nous appelons les belligérants à Ukraine à un cessez-le-feu immédiat. And that is why we are calling for an immediate ceasefire and a de-escalation of the conflict. We call on all of the parties to return to dialogue and to privilege les canaux and to privilege diplomatic channels. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, mon pays est très préoccupé my country par les attaques is very les concerned by the attacks civils civils against civils. civilians and civilian Nous infrastructure. À s'abstenir de toute utilisation d'armes dont les effets seraient indiscriminés. L'accès à l'aide humanitaire pour les populations qui en ont besoin doit être sans entrave ni discrimination. Nous saluons l'élan de générosité des pays voisins de l'Ukraine dans l'accueil des personnes fuyant la guerre. Monsieur le Président, nous donnons écho ici aux cris d'alarme des ressortissants et étudiants africains qui, fuyant la guerre en Ukraine, se heurtent à des discriminations dans leur exode en quête d'abri. Cette situation est inacceptable. Nous disons non au racisme et demandons le respect de la dignité humaine tout en appelant au traitement équitable de toutes les personnes en détresse. Pour terminer, Monsieur le Président, le Gabon soutiendra le projet de résolution soumise à notre examen. Mon pays soutiendra dans cet élan la paix et la sécurité internationale en soulignant le caractère and we stress préoccupant the des assauts contre nos valeurs communes of the assaults on auxquelles our nous assistons parfois impuissants et against which we contre le respect sélectif des principes de la Charte des Nations Unies. Je vous remercie, M. le Président. Je vous remercie, M. le Président. Je vous remercie, M. le Président. Je vous remercie, I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cuba. Señor Presidente, 
El gobierno cubano emitió el pasado 26 de febrero una declaración sobre los acontecimientos en Ucrania en la que expresó claramente su posición a favor de una solución que garantice la seguridad y soberanía de todos y que atienda las legítimas preocupaciones humanitarias. Cuba es un país defensor del derecho internacional y comprometido con la Carta de las Naciones Unidas, que siempre defenderá la paz y se opondrá sin ambigüedades al uso o amenaza del uso de la fuerza contra cualquier Estado. Use of force against es any por ello state. que apoyamos firmemente reason, la proclama de América Latina y el Caribe como zona de paz, uh, firmada en La Habana por los America jefes de Estado y de gobierno peace, de nuestra región of state, uh, en 2014. Cuba está también comprometida con el derecho internacional humanitario y llama a todas las partes a proteger la población, sus bienes y la infraestructura civil. Lamentamos profundamente las pérdidas de vidas de civiles inocentes en Ucrania. El pueblo cubano ha tenido y tiene una relación entrañable con el pueblo ucraniano. With the people of Señor Presidente, President, no resulta posible examinar it con is rigor y honestidad to la situación actual en Ucrania sin valorar detenidamente los factores que han conducido al uso de la fuerza y la no observancia de principios legales and the non-observance of legal principles and Cuba international standards. Esos principios y normas que son referencia imprescindible, particularmente para los países pequeños, contra el hegemonismo, los abusos de poder y las injusticias. El empeño estadounidense en continuar la progresiva expansión de la OTAN hacia las fronteras de la Federación de Rusia ha conducido a un escenario con implicaciones de alcance impredecible que se pudo evitar. Son conocidos los movimientos militares realizados por los Estados Unidos y la OTAN en meses recientes hacia regiones adyacentes a la Federación de Rusia precedidos de la entrega de armas modernas a Ucrania, lo que de conjunto equivale a un cerco militar progresivo. Fue un error ignorar durante décadas los fundados reclamos de garantía de seguridad por parte de la Federación de Rusia y suponer que ese país permanecería inerme ante una amenaza directa a su seguridad nacional. No es posible conseguir la paz cercando ni acorralando a los Estados. La historia exigirá responsabilidad al gobierno de los Estados Unidos por las consecuencias de una doctrina militar crecientemente ofensiva fuera de las fronteras de la OTAN que amenaza la paz, la seguridad y la estabilidad internacional. Se refuerzan nuestras preocupaciones con la decisión reciente adoptada por la OTAN de activar por primera vez la fuerza de respuesta de esa alianza militar. Cuba rechaza la hipocresía y el doble rasero. Debe recordarse que Estados Unidos y la OTAN en 1999 lanzaron una agresión de gran envergadura contra Yugoslavia, país europeo que fragmentaron con un alto costo en vidas en función de sus objetivos geopolíticos, desconociendo la Carta de la ONU. Los Estados Unidos y algunos aliados han utilizado la fuerza en múltiples ocasiones. Invadieron estados soberanos para provocar cambios de régimen e intervienen en los asuntos internos de otras naciones que no se pliegan a sus intereses de dominación y que defienden su integridad territorial e independencia.
son también responsables de la muerte de cientos de miles de civiles que denominan daños colaterales de millones de desplazados y de vasta destrucción en toda la geografía de nuestro planeta como resultado de sus guerras de rapiña. Señor Presidente, el proyecto de resolución sobre la situación en Ucrania no aprobado en el Consejo de Seguridad el pasado 25 de febrero no fue concebido como una contribución real a la búsqueda de soluciones a la crisis actual. El texto bajo consideración de esta Asamblea General adolece de las mismas carencias y el necesario balance. No toma en cuenta las legítimas preocupaciones de todas las partes involucradas. Tampoco se reconoce la responsabilidad de los que instigaron o desplegaron acciones agresivas que precipitaron la escalada which precipitated the escalation of this conflict. Señor Presidente, President, we welcome the opening of negotiations between Russia and Ukraine. The dialogue and negotiations, not the war, are the only way to resolve this conflict. Cuba continuará abogando por una solución diplomática seria, constructiva y realista de la actual crisis en Europa, por medios pacíficos que garantice la seguridad y soberanía de todos, así como la paz, la estabilidad y la seguridad regional e internacional. I thank the distinguished representative of Cuba. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Samoa. Mr. President, Excellencies, Samoa aligns itself with the statement delivered by Fiji on behalf of the Pacific Island Forum. And I wish to add the following remarks in my national capacity. Samoa stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. As a peace-loving and vulnerable small island state, Samoa believes that there are only a few global mechanisms available to safeguard our security, continue existence, and well-being. One of these lies in the maintenance of global peace and the respect for rule-based international order. The preamble of the UN Charter highlights as one of its key raison d'etre of our organization, and I quote, is to save successful generation from the scorch of war and to live in peace with one another as good neighbors. Colleagues, that must be our main focus now as members of the UN family. Samoa is greatly concerned by the invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. Such action is in clear violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and inconsistent with the stated principles laid out in Article 2 of the UN Charter. We condemn Russia's unprovoked attack on Ukraine. Samoa strongly advocates for peace and urge all actors involved to focus their efforts on ensuring an immediate cessation of hostilities protection of civilian 
and civilian infrastructure, reframing from actions that may further escalate the dangerous and delicate situation in Ukraine, cease all military operation and return to the barracks, and prioritize diplomacy to defuse tension. The current call by both Ukraine and Russia for peace talk is therefore most welcome. We join the chorus of call by other delegation on Russia to respect the founding principle of the UN Charter, abide by the principle of international law, state sovereignty and territorial integrity, and fully honor the Minsk Agreement as adopted by the Security Council in 2015. Mr. President, I more strongly support the statement made by the Secretary General last week and yesterday. Samoa may be a small state, but it is our moral obligation to speak up and to be counted for the principle upon which we have all subscribed to. Let us all give peace a chance and support the UN draft resolution. Samoa will co-sponsor and vote yes. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative Samoa. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Philippines. Mr. President, the Philippines will vote yes to the UNGA resolution and expresses explicit condemnation of the invasion of Ukraine. No one can trust news reports of casualties on either side but since 2014, 14,000 have been killed. In the current fog of lies, we have yet to determine the true casualties on both sides. We appeal for the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure. We strongly urge the cessation of hostilities, but while an offense can be stopped at will, the defense cannot rest until it does. We call for massive assistance commensurate with the growing humanitarian crisis and echo the UN Secretary General's appeal for respect of humanitarian principles to protect civilians and civilian infrastructures in Ukraine. Safe access to humanitarian assistance must be assured by the most effective means. The principle of sovereignty and the sovereign equality of states is enshrined in the UN Charter. All states enjoy the right to full sovereignty in all their areas of jurisdiction. The Charter of the United Nations requires sovereign states to refrain from the use of force against the political independence and territorial integrity of any state. We especially condemn the use of separatism and secession as a weapon of diplomacy for inviting and inflicting terrible cruelties and indiscriminate killings, far in excess of that of any other kind of conflict. We saw this in the Balkans and Africa. We strongly urge resort to the 1982 Manila Declaration on the Peaceful Settlement of International Disputes. It will at least halt the ongoing tragedy for a while. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Philippines. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cabo Verde.
colleagues. The government of Cabo Verde has been following with deep and growing concern the unfolding developments in Ukraine as of February 24th, since the beginning of the military invasion of Russia, pursuing the recognition of two Ukrainian regions. In fact, we are witnessing an escalate leading to the worst and dangerous scenario of an urban guerrilla in the big cities in Ukraine, predicting uh, high death tolls, fracturing societies, and grooming a postponed future of a generation. Cabo Verde commends the convenience of this GA, giving to all members the possibility to position vis-a-vis -vis the intensification of this senseless and fratricide war. This is a defying and pivotal moment for UN and for humanity. Thus, we praise the initiatives of the Secretary General and some member states on humanitarian aid and urge for an immediate launch of the operations in the field in order to save lives, especially of the more vulnerable, the fleeing people and the refugees to whom basic human rights rights are defaulting. We commend the efforts of the neighboring countries and urge them to facilitate the entry of all citizens fleeing from Ukraine. We are facing a scenario that represents the biggest global challenge and threat to international peace and security that calls into question the security and well-being of the vulnerable civilian people which is already triggering political, economic, and social consequences, not only in Eastern Europe, but also in the rest of the world. Mr. President, Cabo Verde inequivocally condemns the recourse of th to threat or the use of force in the relations between states and pledges for the respect of the values and the international law enshrined in the United Nations Charter. In this regard, it reiterates the need to observe the principles of sovereign equality, territorial integrity, and unviolability of the states. So let's not fail tackling this serious challenge to multilateralism and prompt a response aiming to stop and revert the situation, honoring the universality of the UN Charter. Being a small island developing state, Cabo Verde attaches paramount importance to the strict, strict observance of the Charter's principles and content. It is existential for us, a safeguard for international peace and security, instrumental in the context of ongoing multidimensional crisis at the outset of the decade of action, already with a pandemic-induced setback in the dynamic of implementation of the Agenda 2030, hampering and putting in risk the consistency of the ongoing timid global recovery trend. On this basis, we firmly believe that no effort should be spared to an immediate ceasefire, as well as to seek a diplomatic way out through dialogue and negotiations for conflict resolution under the provisions of Minsk Agreement in coherence with the Resolution 2202 of the Security Council. The, I, the ongoing direct talks at the Belarusian border, although late, comes at the right direction. We are shocked by what's happening in Ukraine. We bend ourselves in face of the heroism of the Ukrainian people to whom we present our condolences. On the other hand, being a long-standing friend of Russia, we have to beg her to stop the killing of innocent people. Хватит! Давайте прекратить эту войну бессмысленную. Let's stop Let's this war. That's enough. To peace to prevail. 
Cabo Verde will vote for the resolution. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative of Cabo Verde. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Hungary. Mr. President, Excellencies, dear colleagues, while we align ourselves with the statement delivered by the European Union, I wish to make the following remarks in my national capacity. Mr. President, Hungary reaffirms its unwavering support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. The UN Charter is clear. It unequivocally prohibits the use of force against the territorial integrity and political independence of states, and also urges that states settle their international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. We subscribe to the message delivered by the Secretary General on this issue, that the decision of the Russian Federation is a violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine and inconsistent with the principles of the Charter of the United Nations. Mr. President, Hungary condemns Russia's military intervention against Ukraine and the serious escalation we all witnessed during last week, including the threat to use nuclear weapons. Hungary condemns the recognition of the non-governmental controlled areas of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts of Ukraine as independent entities and the subsequent decision to send Russian troops into Ukraine. This aggression against the sovereign UN member state is deeply concerning, as this illegal act further undermines Ukraine's sovereignty and independence, and is a severe breach of international law and international agreements. War is the worst possible scenario, which we hoped to never have to experience again in our neighborhood. We regret that the diplomatic efforts failed to bring a peaceful conclusion of the tensions. Peace and stability is threatened in Europe and worldwide. What is happening in Ukraine affects the security of each and every UN member state. In this situation, we need strategic calmness. We have to avoid actions that further escalate the already dire situation. Mr. President, as for Hungary, the war in our neighboring country is a great security risk. Therefore, we are interested in achieving a peaceful conclusion to this conflict, and we have to also preserve channels of communication in order to maintain the chance for negotiations. Hungary as a Central European country is genuinely interested in East-West dialogue. In our region has always suffered as a consequence of conflict between the power struggle of the powerful nations. We have not forgotten the experience of the Cold War. We welcome news of direct negotiations between the parties and hope that they may lead to a restoration of peace in our neighborhood. We strongly support EU and NATO unity on this issue and support our joint responses to the situation. Hungary underlines its support for the existing international frameworks for the sustainable and peaceful resolution of conflicts in accordance with international law and in particular with the OSCE commitments. Hungary also expresses its support for the valuable engagement of the OSCE special monitoring mission and its tremendous efforts of gathering and reporting facts in an extremely challenging situation. Mr. President, in response to the evolving humanitarian crisis, Hungary is ready and fully mobilized 
to receive refugees who need help or shelter during the ongoing aggression. Our embassies are open and we are operating our border crossing stations with full capacity. Many third countries have requested help from us in evacuating their citizens. We have allowed entrance for all people fleeing from war without any restrictions and without discrimination as to race, ethnicity, religion, or country of origin. We affirm that all cases of discrimination will be thoroughly investigated and perpetrators held accountable. We have established a humanitarian corridor in order to facilitate the entrance of the citizens of these countries to Hungary without a visa, and then we help them make their way to the nearest airport, from where they can safely return to their home countries. Mr. President, even though the situation on the ground is deeply worrying, we believe that there is a diplomatic solution to this conflict. To that end, we urge for the immediate cessation of all hostilities and the resumption of negotiations. I reiterate the proposal made by the Hungarian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Mr. Peter Sijarto, to offer Budapest, Hungary's capital, as a venue for such diplomatic efforts. We hope that the parties accept this invitation and participate in talks with good faith and a willingness to peacefully resolve the crisis and end the war. To conclude, Mr. President, Hungary is deeply worried by the war that is occurring in our neighboring country. We are also worried that it may have security, humanitarian, political, and economic ramifications on a global scale. Hungary, again, reaffirms her unwavering support for Ukraine's territorial integrity, political independence, and sovereignty. Let me reiterate once again our firm belief that tensions and disagreements must be resolved through dialogue and diplomacy, especially in a conflict of this scale. The resolution is not about taking side. It is about upholding the principles of the UN Charter. It is about peace. Hungary will vote yes on this resolution and encourage you all to do the same. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Hungary. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malta. Mr. President, Malta fully aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union and would like to make some additional remarks in its national capacity. Malta reiterates its unwavering support for the sovereignty, territorial integrity and independence of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We express our heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims who have lost their lives because of this unprovoked war by the Russian Federation, which we strongly condemn. This decision is illegal and unacceptable. It is a violation of international law. It is a violation of the UN Charter. It is a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. It is a violation of Russia's own international commitments. Mr. President, Malta fully agrees with the Secretary General's view that this military offensive is a repudiation of the principles of the UN Charter. The foundations of the UN rest on the sovereignty and independence of states, principles that we have all agreed to and that we all depend upon. Threats to the territorial integrity of states and international law are not confined to one region, but have ramifications for the security of all countries. 
Last week, Malta joined a group of over 80 countries to co-sponsor a resolution tabled by the United States and Albania condemning the Russian Federation for its aggression and calling on it to end its offensive. Regrettably, the Security Council was not able to fulfill its duty because a permanent member vetoed the resolution. Even more disturbing is the fact that the permanent member casting the veto is also the aggressor. Mr. President, this war has already had a devastating impact on the lives of civilians. We stress that international humanitarian law must be respected at all times and that the protection of civilians is a fundamental principle. We also call for the facilitation of rapid, safe and unhindered humanitarian assistance to those in need. Malta calls for the immediate withdrawal of Russian forces from Ukraine and emphasizes the need to avoid a dangerous escalation in Europe. It is never too late for diplomacy. We underline once again the serious breaches of the UN Charter are a matter of global concern and as such we hope the General Assembly will send a unanimous signal to the world by defending the very principles on which these United Nations were built and underlining the sovereignty and independence of all member states. Malta will never accept a situation where might is right. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Malta. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malaysia. Mr. President, Malaysia is seriously con concerned over the escalation of military conflict in Ukraine. Malaysia regrets the inability of the Security Council in exercising its primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security. Hence, the necessity of this emergency special session of the UN General Assembly. We are at a crossroad and we understand the legitimate security concerns of all parties. Nevertheless, in any circumstances, all parties must abide and respect the principle of sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states as enshrined in the UN Charter and international law. Any violation of this sacrosanct principle is unacceptable. It is clear that in conflict situations, no solutions can be found at the end of the barrel of a gun. At this critical juncture, we call on all parties to exercise restraint, take concrete steps to de-escalate and pursue dialogue to resolve the conflict peacefully. Malaysia therefore welcomes the direct talks between Ukraine and Russia in Belarus yesterday. We hope that the talks will continue and bring about a speedy resolution to the conflict to prevent further loss of lives and devastation. Malaysia also calls on all parties to refrain from taking unilateral actions that may aggravate tensions and have far-reaching regional and global consequences. We are also deeply concerned on reports about nuclear arsenals being put on high alert status. We call on all nuclear weapon states to adhere to their joint statement of 3rd January 2022 on preventing nuclear war and avoiding arms races. Malaysia fully supports the affirmation that a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. We further urge nuclear weapon states to pursue actions towards the alerting risk reduction and to implement their commitments and obligations related to nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation. With the dire situation on the ground, Malaysia urges all parties to ensure the protection and well-being of the people, in particular women, children, and other vulnerable segments of society. This must also be our immediate priority. In this context, 
we call on all parties to respect the relevant provisions of international humanitarian and human rights laws. Mr. President, Malaysia is also speaking today, having suffered the consequences of the conflict in Ukraine with the downing of Malaysia Airlines Flight MH17 eight years ago. 298 innocent lives were lost in that tragedy. We continue to remember and mourn them. We will also continue joint efforts with our partners to seek justice and accountability in accordance with the rule of law and in line with the UN Security Council Resolution 2166 of 2014. Conclusion, Malaysia reiterates our commitment to the peaceful settlement of dispute guided by the principle enshrined in the UN Charter and international law in the interest of maintaining regional and international peace and security, as well as promoting greater prosperity. In this connection, Malaysia will vote in favour of the draft resolution, which is now before the Assembly. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Malaysia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Kuwait. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Sing God, the Rais. compassionate, the merciful, Mr. Sinaqish President. The Joint Assembly today is discussing the matter of the Security Council's inability to discharge its duty to maintain peace and security in Europe and in the world. The multilateral international system based on the respect for international law and the UN Charter is passing through delicate stage which represents real test for the United Nations to defend the values and principles on which it was founded for more than 76 Years ago, the uh, developing and unfolding situation in Ukraine led to the uh, development of uh, hundreds of thousands as well as the displacement of so many others that require of us taking a uh, steadfast and immediate stand to resolve disputes by peaceful means. We uh, hear here the uh, negotiations held yesterday between Russia and Ukraine in uh, Belarus uh, as a glimmer of hope, and we hope this will be followed by other sessions that will lead to peaceful settlement of that uh, conflict. Kuwait has a small country given our uh, Painful experience in 1991, it upholds its principled positions to abide by international law and the UN Charter, which represents safe haven for small states to maintain their sovereign territorial integrity and independence, embodying the من هذا المنطلق عبرت دولة الكويت عن رفضها القاطع لاستخدام القوة أو التهديد أو التلويح بها في العلاقات بين الدول وتأكيدها على الالتزام الراسخ بالقانون الدولي وميثاق الأمم المتحدة وما نص عليه من مبادئ تحكم وتنظم العلاقات بين الدول وتقوم على احترام سيادة الدول واستقلالها وسلامتها الأقليمية ووحدة أراضيها ضمن حدودها المعترف بها ومبادئ حسن الجوار وعدم التدخل في الشؤون وحل النزاعات بالطرق والوسائل السلمية وفي هذا السياق نجدد تأكيدنا على ضرورة احترام واستقلال وسيادة أوكرانيا ودعوة كافة الأطراف 
المعنية للالتزام بالاتفاقات المبرمة بينهما والآليات المنشأة لمتابعتها كما أقرها مجلس الأمن في قراره 2022 والعمل على إنهاء الأزمة ووقف إطلاق النار لمنع إراقة مزيد من الدماء واللجوء إلى التهدئة والتحلي بضبط النفس وحل الخلافات عن طريق الحوار والمفاوضات السيد الرئيس في الوقت الذي نعبر فيه عن قلقنا البالغ من تدهور الأوضاع والخشية أن تتجه إلى مزيد من التدهور في حال استمرار المساعدة فإننا ندعو كافة الأطراف لاحترام التزاماتها بموجب القانون الإنساني الدولي وقانون حقوق الإنسان وقرارات مجلس الأمن ذات الصلة التي تدعو إلى حماية السكان المدنيين والمنشآت والمرافق المدنية ونستكشف هنا قرار مجلس الأمن 2470 الخاص بالمفقودين في النزاعات المسلحة والذي تم اعتماده بالإجماع من قبل مجلس الأمن عام 2019 ونأمل أن يتم تنفيذ أحكام هذا القرار على أرض الواقع في حالات فقد, في حالات فقد الأشخاص في النزاع وهذا القرار الإنساني يدعو أطراف النزاع لاتخاذ جميع التدابير المناسبة للبحث عن الأشخاص المبلغ عن فقدهم دون تمييز وإنشاء قنوات مناسبة تتيح الاستجابة والتواصل مع الأسر في عملية البحث في الختام تدعم الكويت كافة الجهود والمساعي التي يبذلها الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة ووكالاتها المتخصصة والمنظمات الإقليمية لخفض التصعيد وحدة التوتر كما ندعو إلى العمل على ضمان وصول المساعدات الإنسانية للمحتاجين من المدنيين دون أهلية عراقيل أو قيود وفقا للمبادئ الإنسانية التي نصت عليها الاتفاقيات الدولية وشكرا السيد الرئيس I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Malawi. Mr. President, Excellencies, May I first of all send condolences to the families that have lost their loved ones in the Ukraine crisis. Mr. President, Malawi takes note the resolution tabled on Ukraine crisis and are co-sponsoring it. We note with great concern the worsening situation that has already created grave human suffering in Ukraine. Malawi would like to commend all member states for their contribution and commitment towards a negotiated diplomatic solution to the crisis. As a peace-loving country, Malawi reaffirms her commitment to global peace and security and condemns any escalation of hostilities that threaten this common cause. We therefore take this opportunity to reiterate our commitment and support towards a peaceful resolution of this crisis, more so now when the global community is focused on fighting the COVID-19 crisis and other humanitarian crises. Mr. President, the establishment and survival of the United Nations, as we know it today, is largely due to our shared commitment towards global peace and security. Any threats towards peace and security are equally a threat to the very foundation of this organization and a threat to the progress we have attained over the years to make the world peaceful and safer for humanity and all forms of life on it. 
the progress that has been realized in building the global peace and security architecture should be jealously guarded by all of us. In the same vein, the sanctity, territorial integrity, and sovereignty of all UN member states must be respected and protected. The territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine is no exception. We are all aware of the consequences of a global conflict and its humanitarian, socioeconomic, and political catastrophic impacts, which are needless to ever overemphasize. Mr. President, the world is already grappling with a number of other existential crises, ranging from the COVID-19 pandemic and let alone climate change. Malawi, therefore, commends the restraint shown so far by various stakeholders in the crisis and appeals for the de-escalation of the tension. We call on Russia to immediately cease fire and withdraw its forces, including its military equipment, from Ukraine in order to create conditions necessary for continued diplomatic engagement, peace negotiations, and contact and dialogue for the good of humanity. The current crisis in Ukraine demands a demonstration of leadership by the UN Security Council and all members of the United Nations in a true spirit of multilateralism. Let us give dialogue and peace negotiations a chance. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Malawi. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Marshall Islands. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies. I align my statement with that of Fiji, a chair of the Pacific Island Forum States. And I speak also on my own capacity as PR Marshall Islands to the UN. The Republic of the Marshall Islands welcome this opportunity for the UN General Assembly to convene a special emergency session under General Assembly Resolution 377A. This resolution, known as Uniting for Peace, was established in 1950 to take immediate action when there is a lack of unanimity among the Secu Security Council's five permanent five members on protecting international peace and security. And never has the United Nations General Assembly been needed more than to correct the blatant self-interest of Russia's veto of Security Council Trev Resolution S-2022-155. Mr. President, a complete military invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation is without any rational justification under international law and is little more than a ruse to satisfy an imperialist agenda. Free will and the rule of law are being overruled by the barrel of a gun, sadly held by one of us. Sadly, one of the founding members of this 
UN family, Russia. Free will, the basic sovereignty, and the democratic expression of Ukraine is at direct state, stake. Every democratic country in the world should be concerned because an unlawful invasion of one of us is truly, Mr. President, an unlawful invasion of all of us. And the Marshall Islands will not stay silent. We will call out this unprovoked and violent invasion for exactly what it is, tyranny. The UN Charter is very clear, and the GA is thereafter charged with expressing accountability for the immediate situation. If we, as the United Nations, cannot take action, then as an institution, like the long ago League of Nations, we risk our very relevance. But mere words or outcry alone will not change the course of events. As a small nation, the Republic of the Marshall Islands condemned the recent invasion and urges all full accountability to be established. And we will play our own part in joining partnership, respond measures to counter Russian aggression. Small or large, we must all stand in solidarity to uphold basic human rights and the rule of law, including those from multilateral consequences. Our population is small but our voice can be very loud. As with many other small nations, the UN is our primary platform. And as with many others in this room, our own history as a people is marked, marked by the last global conflict. For Marshall Island, it has taught us a valuable lesson, lesson to achieve and preserve democratic independence and to ensure our voice is heard directly. Dear colleague, as it was repeated by so many other speakers, that is important to speak out. We must all speak out when we see such flagrant wrongs in the world. Because if we do fail now, who then will speak out for us or our neighbors in future threats? In just a fragile region as ours, also facing geopolitical competition, we are closely concerned over the adequacy of multilateral response towards Ukraine. So while this invasion poses a challenge, we are also optimistic that many nations have spoken out and that many more will do so. Mr. President, Excellencies, a veto is and will not, will not stop global consensus. And Ukraine, you have a friend in the Marshall Islands. You are not alone. Remain strong. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Marshall Islands. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Israel. Mr. President, Israel is a country that has experienced many wars and therefore knows firsthand that war is not the way to resolve conflicts. War sows destruction chaos and tragedy, not a brighter future. The Russian attack on Ukraine is a serious violation of the international order. We have condemned it and we call upon Russia to heed the calls of the international community to stop the attack and respect the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. Israel has long-standing and positive relations with both Russia and Ukraine. 
given our deep ties with both sides, we're willing to contribute to the diplomatic efforts if so requested, and have been trying to do so in the last couple of weeks. Israel expresses its concern for the safety of the people of Ukraine, including the numerous Israeli citizens living there and the sizable Jewish communities in the affected areas. We are gravely concerned by the growing humanitarian crisis. In that regard, Israel is providing 100 tons of humanitarian assistance to the people of Ukraine, including medical supplies, water purification systems, emergency water supply kits, and winter gear. We are calling upon the parties to facilitate humanitarian access. Mr. President, let me conclude by echoing the call of the Secretary General to turn to the path of dialogue and peace and to resolve this crisis through peaceful means in accordance with the principles of the UN Charter. I will end with the words of the prophet Isaiah, which express in this context and beyond my government's prayers, and I would hope the praise of all those sitting in this hall. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Israel. We have heard the last speaker in the debate on this item for this meeting. We shall hear the remaining speakers this afternoon in this hall at 3 p.m. The meeting is adjourned. Einsten zum Entspannen und Genießen. Radio Suisse Jazz vous souhaite une belle soirée avec l'émission Jazz for Dinner pour votre détente et votre plaisir.
somewhere before and laughed before and loved before but who knows where oh when but who knows where oh when
I'm telling you, you can't hide away from love. Even though you may feel you had enough. It'll give you two black eyes and discolor all your skies. I'm telling you, you can't hide away from love. I'm telling you now, don't mess around with love. Telling you you won't last around with love. It'll have you on your back. It'll break into your flat. I'm telling you you can't hide away from love. Like a man off the wagon who's found the mini bar key, when your ex raver stumbles into your warehouse party, so reel me in until I'm gasping for air. There's no love without despair. I'm telling you to throw on the clothes of love. I'm telling you they're worth it, the woes of love. It'll shake you to the core and leave you crying on the floor. I'm telling you, you can't hide away from love. Hide away from love.
Radio Suisse Jazz. Swiss Made by SRG SSR.
moonshots Spend it all the half nights Monday we make it For we see it You take it No chance to increase finance. Bills pile up sky high. Send that boy off to die. Make me wanna holler the way they do my life. Make me wanna holler the way they do my life.
Sie hören die Sendung Jazz for Dinner. Detaillierte Angaben zu allen Musiktiteln finden Sie auf radioswissjazz.ch. Vous écoutez Jazz for Dinner. Retrouvez tous les titres sur radioswissjazz.ch. Try to please me. 
doesn't even tease me And he never sees me glance his way And though I'm hot sure The boy next door Affection for me won't display The boy next door. sees me glance his way and though I'm hot sure the boy next door affection for me won't his play
Just think of things like daffodils and peaceful sheep on clovered hills. The morning song of whippoorwills. Then you'll see the face that I love. Think of any. Sky, getting ready to cry. Down comes the rain, but it's raining confetti. Then think of things like far-off isles and blue-green eyes and sunlit smiles, and in your hand the wishing star. The one you thought too far above. Every love leaf you introduces you to the face I love. Just think of things like daffodils and peaceful sheep on clovered hills. The more Song of whippoorwills, and you'll see the face that I love. Think of any old sky getting ready to cry. Down comes the rain, but it's raining confetti. And think of things like far-off isles, blue-green eyes, and sunlit smiles, and in your hand a wishing star. The one you thought too far above. Every love leaf you introduces you to the face I Swiss Jazz Swiss Made by SRG SSR
Spider-Man, Spider-Man Does whatever a spider can Spins a web and he sighs Catches thieves just like flies Look out, here comes the Spider-Man Is he strong? Listen, bud He's got radioactive blood Can he swing from a thread? Take a look overhead Hey there There goes the Spider-Man In the chill of night At the scene of a crime Like a streak of light He arrives just in time Spider-Man, Spider-Man Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man Wealth and fame he's ignored Action is his reward to him Life is a great big bang up Whenever there's a hand up, you'll find the Spider-Man. Chill of the night at the scene of a crime Like a streak of light He arrives just in time Spider-Man, Spider-Man Friendly a neighborhood Spider-Man Wealth and fame he's ignored and action To him, life is a great big bang up. Whenever there's a hang up, go find the Spider Man.
Die Sendung Jazz for Dinner. Detaillierte Angaben zu allen Musiktiteln finden Sie auf radioswissjazz.ch. Vous écoutez Jazz for Dinner. Retrouvez tous les titres sur radioswissjazz.ch. Thank you. 
Thank you.
Radio Swiss Jazz. Music pure. Ohne Moderation, ohne Werbung.
just another man doing what he can. But what does she care when a woman loves a man? She'll just string along all through thick and thin till his ship comes in. It's always that way when a woman loves a man. She'll be the first one to praise him when he's going strong. Last one to blame him when everything's wrong. It's such a one-sided game that they play. But women are funny that way. Tell her she's a fool. She'll say yes, I do. But I love him so And that's how it goes When a woman loves a Thank you. 
Radio Swiss Jazz. Music pure. Hard. I think 
I'm gonna have to use my rug Cause I believe Oh, I believe Well, I believe Yes, I do Try to make a fool of me
Radio Swiss Jazz. Music pure. Some people say a man is made out of mud. A poor man's made out of muscle and blood. Muscle and blood and skin and bone A mind that's weak and a back that's strong You look at 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can go I owe my soul to the company store I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine I picked up my shovel and I walked to the mine I loaded 16 tons of number nine coal And the straw boss said, well, bless my soul You load 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and a deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can go I owe my soul to the company store I was born one morning, it was drizzling rain Fighting and trouble are my middle name I got raised in the cane, brave by an old mama line Can't no high-toned woman make me toe the line You got 16 tons, why do you get Another day older and a deeper in debt St. Peter, don't you call me, cause I can go I owe my soul to the company store If you see me coming, better step aside A lot of men didn't, a lot of men died I got one fist of iron and the other of steel If the right one don't get you, then the left one will why do you get another day older and a deeper end? Soon, Peter, don't you call me, cause I can go. I own my soul to the company store.
the fourth plenary meeting of the 11th emergency special session of the General Assembly is called to order. The Assembly will continue its consideration of Agenda Item 5, entitled Letter Dated 28 February 2014 from the Permanent Representative of Ukraine to the United Nations, addressed to the President of the Security Council, S-2014-136. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Endora. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, Excellency, the Principality of Andorra aligned itself with the statement made by the European Union during yesterday's meeting. As a country with a small surface area that has never had an army, Andorra's support for international law and the United Nations Charter is unshakable. Respect for international law must be at the heart of all member states' big or small. That was the commitment adopted in the United Nations Charter in 1945 that we all solemnly accepted. It is this same commitment that was recently reaffirmed in this room in the Declaration for the 75th Anniversary of the United Nations, with the firm conviction of contributing to defending the principles and values of the United Nations Charter, which govern international relations. During the Security Council meeting on Friday, Andorra co-signed the Resolution of the Council on Security Visant à Mettre en Fin aux Hostilités en Ukraine. If the Security Council has failed in fulfilling its primary responsibility for the maintenance of international relations, the primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security due to a lack of consensus among its permanent members. This assembly must take the necessary action and decision to achieve it. For that reason, the Principality of Andorra supports today's resolution. We are aware that the Council of the United Nations has been affected by armed conflicts. We are aware that many countries are affected by armed conflicts, and all of these conflicts have the same victim, the civilian population. And I shouldn't like to miss this opportunity to underscore the impact on children. We cannot assume that this is not the case. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. We are not going to vote in favour of this resolution. Et le dialogue doit prévaloir. Comme le secrétaire général l'a proclamé, il n'y a pas d'alternative à la diplomatie. Nous y croyons fermement. Monsieur le Président, la principauté d'Andorre exprime sa plus vive préoccupation face à la situation actuelle. Nous condamnons fermement l'attaque de la Fédération de Russie contre l'Ukraine. Nous sommes de plus très préoccupés par l'escalade de la violence à la région. Nous appelons par conséquent tous les partis à s'abstenir de prendre des mesures contraires aux principes et aux valeurs de la Charte des Nations Unies. Nous appelons à la restauration de la paix, au cessez-le-feu, à tous les partis à s'engager dans un dialogue constructif, à utiliser pleinement les voies diplomatiques et les mécanismes internationaux pour parvenir à une solution pacifique, politique et durable au conflit. Nous saluons avec espoir la décision de la Fédération de Russie et de l'Ukraine de rétablir le dialogue. Il est de notre responsabilité commune de trouver un moyen de réduire ces tensions et de prévenir les souffrances de la population civile. Nous saluons l'offre des bons offices du secrétaire général ainsi que les efforts déployés par les nombreux États pour trouver une solution politique, pacifique et durable au conflit. Monsieur le Président, L'Andorre est notamment préoccupé par la détérioration de la situation humanitaire dans la région. Des millions de personnes ont besoin d'aide humanitaire. Il est essentiel que les partis au conflit respectent leurs obligations internationales et les droits internationaux humanitaires. L'Andorre salue les efforts déployés par les organismes internationaux sur le terrain pour aider la population civile dont l'Andorre est pleinement solidaire. L'Andorre fera une contribution spécifique au comité international de la Croix. Pour conclure, Monsieur le Président, l'Andorre veut réitérer son attachement à l'indépendance, à la souveraineté et à l'intégrité territoriale de l'Ukraine à l'intérieur de ses frontières internationalement reconnues. Je vous remercie de votre attention.
I thank the distinguished representative of Endora. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cote d'Ivoire. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President. Alors que l'humanité peine à se remettre des multiples conséquences de la pandémie de la COVID-19, elle se trouve aujourd'hui confrontée à une crise inacceptable imposée aux Ukrainiens. Monsieur le Président, ma délégation voudrait vous remercier pour la tenue de cette session spéciale d'urgence de l'Assemblée générale consacrée à l'examen du projet de résolution sur la situation en Ukraine. Mon pays votera en faveur du projet de résolution qui nous a soumis pour marquer son attachement au respect de l'intégrité, de la souveraineté territoriale et de l'indépendance des États, ainsi qu'aux règlements pacifiques et différents tels que prescrits par la Charte des Nations. La Côte d'Ivoire votera donc pour la paix. Elle la défendra partout contre la guerre, contre la raison plus forte. Nous devons en effet avoir toujours à l'esprit la responsabilité impérieuse qui nous incombe de laisser aux générations futures plus que nous n'avons reçu des générations précédentes. Monsieur le Président, mon pays note avec regret et les nombreux efforts déployés par la communauté internationale, y compris les Nations Unies, n'ont pas permis d'épargner le monde d'un autre conflit de grande intensité. En effet, la crise en Ukraine a des conséquences dommageables, non seulement pour ce pays, mais également pour l'ensemble de la région qui pourrait constituer une menace à la paix et à la sécurité internationale. Ma délégation est donc vivement préoccupée par l'enlisement déplorable du conflit en Ukraine qui nous éloigne des buts et principes auxquels nous avons librement consenti en tant qu'État membre des Nations Unies, en réaffirmant son attachement à l'intégrité territoriale de l'Ukraine dans ses frontières internationalement reconnues, la Côte d'Ivoire voudrait inviter toutes les parties à un cessez-le-feu immédiat en vue de sauver des vies et de donner une chance au dialogue, un dialogue franc, un dialogue sincère. Ce silence des armes est crucial pour renouer avec la diplomatie en vue de mettre un terme à cette guerre inacceptable. Monsieur le Président, la délégation est en outre fortement préoccupée par les chiffres élevés communiqués par le Haut Commissariat aux réfugiés sur les décès et sur les personnes déplacées qui fuient les combats en Ukraine. Elle exhorte par conséquent les parties au conflit, au respect du droit humanitaire et à faciliter l'accès de l'aide aux populations dans le besoin. Nous lançons également un vibrant appel à la communauté internationale, y compris aux acteurs humanitaires, afin qu'elle mobilise les moyens nécessaires en vue d'apporter une assistance aux populations en détresse, tant en Ukraine que dans les pays d'accueil de nombreux réfugiés. Monsieur le Président, mon pays a appris que des personnes d'origine africaine fuyant la terreur qui s'abat sur l'Ukraine sont l'objet de brimades ou de traitements à relents racistes. Si ces informations étaient avérées, il aurait des raisons de se poser des questions légitimes sur cette attitude pour le moins discriminatoire et inhumaine. C'est le lieu d'inviter les ressortissants des pays amis qui s'adonnent à ce comportement à faire preuve de plus de retenue, de tolérance et d'un surcroît d'humanité dans ces moments de défi pour toute la communauté internationale.
Pour conclure, to conclude, la Côte d'Ivoire voudrait renouveler son plaidoyer en faveur d'un cessez-le-feu immédiat afin que s'engage sans délai so that le dialogue, dialogue instrument privilégié de résolution pacifique de tout différent tel que préconisé par la Charte des Nations Unies. Le premier président de la Côte d'Ivoire indépendante, Félix Côte disait c'est justement à propos du dialogue, et je cite, dans la recherche de la paix, de la vraie paix, de la paix juste et durable, on ne doit pas hésiter un seul instant à recourir avec obstination au dialogue. Um, le dialogue est certainement l'arme des forts dialogue is most et non celle des faibles. Fin de citation, je vous remercie. End quote. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Côte d'Ivoire. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Republic of Moldova. Mr. President, the Republic of Moldova aligns itself with the statement of the European Union and wishes to add the following remarks in its national capacity. Excellencies, the Republic of Moldova was among the 81 co-sponsors of the draft resolution that could not be passed by the Security Council. As the debate was transferred to the General Assembly, where we all have equal rights to vote, we decided to co-sponsor again the new draft resolution. By doing this, Moldova wants to add its contribution to the collective efforts aimed at stopping the war and helping our organization to fulfill its mission as the utmost defender of international law, peace, and security. Distinguished delegates, the Republic of Moldova condemns in the strongest possible terms the act of war launched by the Russian Federation against Ukraine. This attack constitutes a blatant breach of international law and a serious violation of the fundamental documents and principles on which this organization and the international order are based. We are horrified by the unprovoked use of force against Ukraine our friendly and neighboring country. The terrible death toll of the five days of military actions in, uh, is rising with every hour. Numerous uh, civilian deaths, hundreds of thousands of displaced persons and refugees destroyed infrastructure. We must act immediately to stop this ordeal against the Ukrainian people that threatens regional and international peace and security. Therefore, while being a neutral country, we urge the Russian Federation to immediately stop the use of military force, the, to completely withdraw all its military forces from the territory of Ukraine, and to return to dialogue and diplomacy as the only means for ensuring peace and stability on our continent. Mr. President, the six days of war have triggered a major humanitarian crisis in the region. Ukraine and its people are the most hardly hit. But the crisis also affected particularly hard the neighboring countries, including Moldova, which are coping now with the challenge of effectively handling the large refugee flow coming from Ukraine. Since the, star since the start of hostilities, about 95,000 refugees fleeing from Ukraine have entered Moldova. The absolutely majority of them are women, children, and the elderly. To put this figure into perspective, 
given the difference in the size of the population, such a flow would be equal to about 2 million refugees entering a country with the population size of Germany in just five days. More than half of those who entered Moldova being afraid for their lives uh, and seeking shelter decided to remain in my country. We are talking about 60,000 persons which are now being taken care of and accommodated by the Moldovan authorities and welcomed to their homes by ordinary Moldovans. We do our best to cope with this situation, but we also need to su the support of our partners. In this regard, the Mo Republic of Moldova fully supports the humanitarian appeal launched by the United Nations Secretary General to scale up humanitarian assistance in and around Ukraine. In the coming days, the Republic of Moldova will be visited by the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Mr. Filippo Grandi, whom we welcome and are looking forward to discussing the avenues for enhanced cooperation with a view to effectively respond to the humanitarian crisis. We'll continue keeping our borders open to those who seek refugee in Moldova. Mr. President, in conclusion, I would like to express our full solidarity with Ukraine, its people, and its democratically elected authorities. The Republic of Moldova reiterates its strong and unwavering support for the independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of Ukraine within the, its internationally recognized borders. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of the Republic of Moldova. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Nepal. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, at the outset, I'd like to thank you, Mr. President, for convening this emergency special session of the General Assembly. Truly, a global parliament with 193 member states to deliver on its urgent responsibility to maintain international peace and security in general and to restore peace in Ukraine in particular. Nepal is deeply concerned with the deaths and human sufferings in Ukraine and calls for an urgent cessation of hostilities and violence. We call on all parties concerned to exercise maximum restraints to de-escalate the tension immediately. We are also deeply concerned about the safety and security of Nepali nationals currently in Ukraine and request all concerned for the facilitation of their safe passes from there. We call on the parties concerned to honor the obligation under international humanitarian law for the protection of the civilians and civilian objects. Violence breeds more violence, and it never incubates peace. Make no mistake, there is no alternative to the path of peace. Diplomacy and dialogues are the only pathways to restoring and building lasting peace. My delegation welcomes starting of direct talks between the parties concerned. We urge both sides to resume and continue to engage in dialogue with utmost sincerity and commitment to peace and find a durable political solution at the earliest. Nepal views that the principle of sovereign sovereignty and territorial integrity as enshrined in the UN Charter are sacrosanct and must be fully respected by all member states, irrespective of their 
economic prowess or military might. We oppose any threat or use a force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any sovereign country under any pretext or circumstances. Mr. President, let me reiterate Nepal's unwavering faith in the peaceful resolution of international disputes through diplomacy and dialogue. Returning to the path of peace is never late, and it is high time to choose to return. I urge all concerned parties to give peace a chance. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Nepal. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Granada. Mr. President, at the outset, Grenada aligns itself with the statements of the Caribbean community, CARICOM, issued on the 24th of February, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, of the 26th of February. Mr. President, Grenada expressly condemns the Russian Federation's assault on the people of Ukraine. Assault on the principles of respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of all states. And assault on the provisions of international peace and stability as enshrined in the charter of this very United Nations. Universal respect and adherence to these norms and principles of international law are fundamental to the maintenance of the international system and global peace and security. The rule of law is not merely a priority, but is also existential for many small states who are without a military like Grenada, serving as the sole shield to outside interference and our attack. We call for an immediate end to the hostilities. The long history of diplomatic engagement among countries provides adequate tools for the settlement of disputes without having to resort to violence, which hurts the very people who give leaders legitimacy in office. We therefore reassert CARICOM's call on all parties involved to urgently embark on intensified diplomatic dialogue to immediately de-escalate hostilities and work towards a sustainable peace. Grenada supports and commends the efforts of the United Nations Secretary General to bring a speedy resolution to the conflict. Mr. President, we commend also the neighboring countries who are meeting the moment and are providing much needed refuge to the victims of these hostilities. We further call for strict adherence to international humanitarian law, including the unfettered passage for all those fleeing conflicts. We are concerned by the reports of the disparate treatment of African nationals on the border who are encountering impediments as they desperately seek safety. We call on all states to uphold and adhere to its international obligations. Mr. President, we are one minute to midnight. We must pull back from the brink. We urge all parties to continue dialogue, return to diplomacy, peace, and to the bedrock principles upon which this august body was founded. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Granada.
Now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mr. President, Excellencies, dear colleagues, Bosnia-Herzegovina allied itself with European Union statement. I will make following remarks in my national capacity. As we speak, the world is facing one of its most acute security crises since World War II. At this very moment, the attack on Ukraine is taking new civilian victims. The fighting is ongoing. The UN Charter is being ignored or violated and half a million civilians have already been internally displaced or forced to flee across international border into neighboring European countries. The Ukrainian government estimates as many as five million refugees will be displaced in the worst case scenario. The innocent people always pay the highest price. The most vulnerable suffer the most. As deaths are rising, we are seeing images of fear and terror in every corner of Europe. What can be the message of the ambassador of Bosnia-Herzegovina, the country that suffered aggression, the brutal occupation for almost four years facing the arms trade embargo, where genocide was committed three de decades ago, and almost half of the population was brutally killed, displaced, or expelled. Developing situation in Ukraine, unfortunately, resonates awfully close to home. That is why we should not wait anymore. As a result of the conflict, millions of Ukrainians are in need of humanitarian assistance. We call on both sides to respect international humanitarian law and guarantee unhindered and sustained access for humanitarian actors including UNHCR and other UN agencies, as well as national and international NGOs who all help people in need. The people of Bosnia-Herzegovina recognize the brave women and men of Ukraine fighting for their sovereignty and freedom. Bosnia-Herzegovina remains committed to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, as we do for every member states of the United Nations. That is the foundation of our UN Charter that we did not expect to be challenged in this brutal way, but one of the founding members and creators of this very organization. And permanent members of the Security Council have a particular responsibility in upholding the Charter. Russia's aggression against Ukraine has severe global implications. Non-compliance with the fundamental principles of international law, the UN Charter and basic principles of international relations directed towards another state is a very serious concern. These rules apply to all. We call on all international organizations, especially the international court and tribunals to closely monitor the developments on the ground and to assess any violation of international law including international humanitarian law. The Security Council, which according to the UN Charter has the obligation and general powers to maintain the international peace and security, has unfortunately, in this case, failed so far. Negotiating peace must continue to be objective over any military solution to the crisis. We reiterate the Secretary General call for immediate cessation of hostilities and start of bilateral negotiation for a peaceful resolution of the conflict in line with the UN Charter. We have been given a little hope as the first attempt for bilateral negotiation between the representatives of Ukraine and the Russian Federation started yesterday. I'm hopeful that all sides will be able to put an additional effort to stop the bloodshed and return to negotiating table as soon as possible. Mr. President, 
We are facing an unprecedented international situation where the use of nuclear weapons is becoming an option. We are, as a global community, ready to put the, uh, to put the generation of children before this challenge. Have we, as the United Nations, sourced all av available means in accordance with the UN Charter, including Chapter 7, that enables the Security Council to take coercive action with respect to the threat of the peace, breaches of the peace, and acts of the aggression? It's my hope that the United Nations will not wait long and let many more civilians and innocent people suffer and be killed, displaced or expelled, before taking appropriate action to end this brutal bloodshed, as it was the case in my own country 30 years ago. At the end of this session, the UN will vote on the draft resolution condemning the Russian aggression on Ukraine. Bosnia-Herzegovina will vote yes and invite all member states to do so. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And now I give the floor to the distinguished representative of Republic of Korea. <clears throat> Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, we are gathered here today at one of the darkest times in recent history. My delegation joins the international community in strongly condemning Russia's armed invasion of Ukraine. In this regard, the Republic of Korea co-sponsored the UN Security Council resolution last week and also the GA resolution scheduled for a vote later on. This war was a choice made by Russia, which would not have taken place if it had listened to the calls of the international community. We condemn any act that seriously undermines the sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity of any member state. Russia's decision to recognize the independence of certain areas of Donetsk and Luhansk regions undermines the fundamental principles of the UN Charter. Ukraine's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence must be respected. My delegation takes this opportunity to affirm its solidarity towards Ukraine and its people. We urge Russia to stop its offensive against Ukraine and to immediately withdraw all of its military forces from the territory of Ukraine. We strongly oppose any use of force in seeking a change in status. We also call on Russia to immediately reverse its decision related to the status of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions of Ukraine. My delegation is seriously concerned by the recent announcement by Russia to put its strategic deterrence forces on high alert. We urge Russia to refrain from further escalating the crisis and to seek diplomatic solution. Reports of increasing civilian casualties and mass dis displacement, as well as the destruction of civilian infrastructure, are of grave concern. 
the relevant provisions of international humanitarian law and international hu human rights law should be respected. We welcome the continued efforts of the Secretary General, member states, and regional and international organizations to respond to the humanitarian crises. In this vein, the Republic of Korea will further increase its humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. Mr. President, in the early days of this organization, the Republic of Korea was the first country that the United Nations assisted in response to an act of aggression under the Uniting for Peace Resolution. The resolution forms the basis of today's emergency special session. The resolution forms the very basis of today's emergency special session. I repeat, my country still exists today because the peoples of the United Nations at the time stood up immediately to the crisis of the innocent lives that had to suffer for no reason of their own. It was a testimony, a clear example of what this organization could do when we are united together with one voice to protect the principles of the UN Charter. This is why my delegation does not see the situation in Ukraine as some distant tragedy. This is why we are expressing our solidarity towards the Ukrainian people. This is why we still try to have hope in this system and the commitment of its member states to uphold the principles of the Charter. And again, this is why we must be resolutely united against this act of aggression. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Trinidad and Tobago welcomes the convening of this emergency special session, though not the circumstances that make it necessary. As a democratic, peace-loving people and an unrelenting advocate of the rule of law, Trinidad and Tobago can neither subscribe to nor ignore any unilateral attempt to violate the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of any state under the threat or use of force. Such acts of aggression and expansionism violate peremptory norms of international law and do violence to the principles and purposes of the Charter of the United Nations, our Charter, to which we, the members of this organization, freely exercise our choice to be bound. For Trinidad and Tobago, therefore, membership of the United Nations constitutes a solemn undertaking, among other things, to promote and support and de to devote one's efforts towards the maintenance and strengthening of the rules-based order as the centerpiece of international peace and security.
that undertaking cannot legitimately be flouted or discarded at will, as if it were simply a matter of convenience. It is decidedly not a matter of convenience or choice. Rather, it is an obligation that, that as member states, we all share a duty to respect and to honor unconditionally, and when breaches occur, to defend. The violation of Ukraine's internationally agreed borders and its territorial integrity constitute a real threat to international peace and security and creates a dangerous precedent inimical to the vital security interests of small states like mine. Trinidad and Tobago will never accept as legitimate or excusable such egregious violation of the Charter and of international law on which we and other small states bereft of military arsenals rely to guarantee our very existence as sovereign independent states. For us, our suit of armor resides in the principles enshrined in the Charter and in the universal and unconditional acceptance of the basic tenets of international law by all members of the international community. Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago therefore condemns the ongoing unilateral military aggression committed by the Russian Federation against the state and people of Ukraine and calls upon Russia to immediately abandon this action, recall its troops without any conditions, and to return genuinely to the path of dialogue and diplomacy in good faith in order to reduce tensions and to create an atmosphere conducive to resolving the conflict. In this regard, yesterday's meeting between the combatants is encouraging in that it offers some hope for the possibility of de-escalation. That process warrants our attention and support as frank and meaningful dialogue offers the only prospect of avoiding further escalation that will surely result in additional loss of life, further increases in the already tumultuous human displacement currently occurring, and intensify the destruction of livelihoods and property. Mr. President, Trinidad and Tobago received with deep concern and distress yesterday the announcement by the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court that based on the evidence gathered thus far, there is a sufficient basis to launch a formal investigation into the alleged commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity on the territory of UK Ukraine. The prosecutor's findings must be worrying to all who accept the sanctity of international human rights and of international humanitarian law. While it is not for us to make any pronouncements on either the course or indeed the outcome of the prosecutor's investigation, Trinidad and Tobago expresses its continuing confidence in the will and capacity of the court to execute its mandate in a just, independent, and impartial manner. In closing, Mr. President, while standing in solidarity with the government and people of Ukraine, Trinidad and Tobago calls upon both parties to summon the will to ensure, that, to ensure their full compliance with their obligations under international humanitarian law and international human rights law. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative Trinidad and Tobago.
I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Mr. President, Mr. President. Como miembro fundador de las Naciones Unidas, Nations, la República Bolivariana de Venezuela es un firme defensor de los principios y propósitos consagrados en la Carta Fundacional de nuestra organización, así como de las normas del derecho internacional. Señor Presidente, la situación en Ucrania ha sido un asunto ampliamente debatido en los últimos años. Al abordar esta cuestión, nuestro país, fiel a su diplomacia de paz, ha apostado a la resolución pacífica de cualquier diferencia que pueda existir en la región de Europa del Este. Con ese espíritu, votamos en el año 2015 en nuestra condición de miembro no permanente del Consejo de Seguridad por la resolución 2202 que hizo suyo el paquete de medidas para la aplicación de los acuerdos de Minsk. Este año se construyó un camino diplomático acordado por todos para alcanzar una solución pacífica a la guerra civil en Ucrania. Sin embargo, dolorosamente, esos acuerdos fueron desperdiciados tras siete años de incumplimientos dentro de Ucrania que profundizaron la fractura nacional y el sufrimiento de la población civil. La violenta crisis interna fue agudizada por un nuevo factor. La creciente presión externa del bloque militar de la OTAN hacia la propia Ucrania con el efecto destructor de las garantías de seguridad para todos, especialmente la Federación Rusa, que son la base de la arquitectura de seguridad de Europa. La expansión permanente de la OTAN hacia el este de Europa añadió una amenaza de un nivel superior de carácter estratégico a la crisis que ya era nacional de Ucrania. Así las cosas, estamos viviendo hoy una crisis en tres niveles con lamentables pérdidas humanas y cuyos desarrollos en el terreno están cambiando a gran velocidad. Lo que surgió como la violenta fractura nacional de Ucrania escaló a un nivel superior y desencadenó una crisis militar internacional. En estos momentos, a menos de una semana de iniciado el conflicto, Transitamos peligrosamente, casi sin darnos cuenta, hacia un tercer nivel, el recalentamiento entre cuatro potencias nucleares que al alterar sus equilibrios estratégicos de seguridad y pretender desestabilizar a una de ellas, en este caso, la Federación Rusa, puede desencadenar, desencadenar un conflicto de proporciones mundiales. Esta situación no tiene precedente en la historia posterior a la Segunda Guerra Mundial. Señor Presidente, en la actual coyuntura que vive la región de Europa del Este, la seguridad es un valor que debe prevalecer para todas las partes involucradas. Las Naciones Unidas fueron establecidas después de la guerra más grande de la historia para garantizar el mantenimiento de la paz y la seguridad internacional. Su mayor éxito ha sido evitar una tercera guerra mundial, incluso cuando no ha sido And posible evitar un conflicto armado, el papel de nuestra organización ha sido por la vía de la negociación política el de revertir el conflicto hacia el camino de la diplomacia para su resolución pacífica. Esa es nuestra obligación hoy, corregir el rumbo para evitar llegar a un punto de no retorno que comprometa la supervivencia de las generaciones presentes y futuras y construir un camino que frene el escalamiento de We must work towards ending an Nuestro escalation papel hoy no es alimentar las tensiones y las divisiones en los tres niveles ya mencionados, el nivel nacional, el nivel regional y el nivel mundial. Las Naciones Unidas no pueden ser utilizadas para profundizar los conflictos. Enfatizamos que esta es la única institución en el mundo con la capacidad, la experiencia y los instrumentos necesarios para alcanzar el arreglo pacífico de las controversias en la magnitud que enfrentamos hoy, cuál es la creciente amenaza de un conflicto mundial 
e interpotencias nucleares. Es por todo lo anterior que, para salir de este laberinto en que nos encontramos hoy, hacemos un llamado a esta Asamblea General y a los miembros responsables de la comunidad internacional a abordar estas crisis en sus tres niveles de manera balanceada y con suma cautela en aras de evitar profundizar las divisiones. So that we avoid este orden, rechazamos la aplicación de medidas coercitivas unilaterales y de retaliación bajo su forma económica, comercial o financiera, pues intensificarán la crisis y prolongarán el conflicto. Cuando la humanidad sigue sintiendo los efectos de la pandemia del COVID-19, se va a imponer por diseño una nueva crisis económica global con el expreso propósito de generar sufrimiento sobre centenares de millones de personas en todo el mundo. Una crisis generada deliberadamente para desestabilizar a una potencia nuclear. Eso no es el camino a la paz. Señor Presidente, el principio de seguridad indivisible presupone que la seguridad de un país no puede sacrificar la seguridad de otro y los bloques militares como la OTAN no pueden expandirse indefinidamente amenazando la seguridad de otras regiones del planeta. Resulta pues necesario iniciar negociaciones directas que permitan una pronta resolución pacífica, integral y duradera de la actual coyuntura en sus tres niveles y donde se tomen en cuenta las preocupaciones de todas las partes concernidas. Por una parte, un diálogo político entre Rusia y Ucrania, y a cuyos efectos damos la bienvenida a los recientes contactos en Belarus. Y por otra, conversaciones directas y en igualdad de condiciones entre Rusia y la OTAN, que permitan construir un mecanismo de seguridad europeo equilibrado, efectivo y sostenible. Para concluir, la República Bolivariana de Venezuela reitera su inquebrantable compromiso con los propósitos y principios consagrados en la Carta de las Naciones Unidas. Desde esta tribuna hacemos un llamado al cese de la propaganda de guerra, así como al discurso de la intolerancia guiados por las ideologías de odio, y enfatizamos que solo a través de la diplomacia, del diálogo y la contención, sin presiones, ni sanciones, podremos construir un necesario cortafuego entre los tres niveles de la crisis en Ucrania e impedir así una reacción en cadena que nos lleve como sonámbulos a la vida. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. I thank the distinguished representative of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Vietnam. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, more than 70 years ago, the founders of the United Nations instilled into the Charter their hope and aspiration to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. They enshrined in the Charter the fundamental principles which have become the foundation for contemporary international law and friendly relations and cooperation among nations. However, actions not in line with these principles continue to pose serious threats to international peace and security and development of nations and the people. They challenge the very relevance and legitimacy of the United Nations. For a number of times, our nation's own history of enduring war have shown that too often wars and conflicts until today stem from obsolete doctrines of power politics, the ambition of domination, and the imposition and the use of force 
in settling international disputes. A number of them are associated with historical legacies, misperception, and misunderstanding. Vietnam understands firsthand that once broken out, wars and conflicts only cause enormous suffering to human beings and grave consequences for many aspects of the life of nations directly involved as well as, as, well as of others. Against this backdrop, Vietnam has time and again underscored the importance of respect for international law and the UN Charter. All international disputes should be resolved by peaceful means based on the fundamental principles of international law and the United Nations Charter. These include the principles of sovereignty equality, respect for the political independence and territorial integrity of states, non-interference in internal affairs of states, and refrainment from the threat of use of force. All states, large and small, must adhere to these fundamental principles. Vietnam, therefore, has been extremely concerned over the ongoing armed conflict in Ukraine, a sovereign member state of the United Nations. Vietnam and other ASEAN member states issued a statement on this matter on the 26th February 2022. It is imperative now to exercise utmost restraint and immediate cease the use of force to avoid further casualties and losses, especially those of civilians. We call on all concerned parties to de-escalate tension, resume dialogue and negotiation through own channels with a view to achieving long-term solutions that take into consideration the interest and concern of all parties. In accordance with international law, in particular, the respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. Such a solution will put an end to the ongoing sufferings and make major contribution to peace, security, and development in Europe and the world at large. In this regard, we take note of the meeting between the delegations of Ukraine and the Russian Federation yesterday and look forward for, to continued engagement by relevant parties and early results from the negotiations. At the same time, it is of critical importance to safeguard the safety, security of the people and indispensable civilian infrastructure in line with international humanitarian law. To create a favorable environment for such objectives, we call on the international communities, countries in and beyond the region to continue their support for and facilitation of dialogue among parties. We encourage greater efforts to scale up humanitarian assistance for civilians and command operations by the UN and other partners in the last few days to assist people on the ground, including refugees. It is also essential to ensure safety and security for all foreign nationals living in Ukraine, including Vietnamese nationals, as well as the facilitation of their evacuation. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Vietnam. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Argentina. Señor Secretario General, Señor Presidente de la Asamblea, distinguidos colegas, nos encontramos reunidos en la Asamblea para defender los principios fundamentales de las Naciones Unidas, defender la paz y la seguridad internacional. La situación de Ucrania no puede ser ajena a esa finalidad fundamental de esta organización. 
fundamental purposes of this organization. We have asked all parties involved in the situation in Ukraine to de-escalate the conflict, and that is why we agreed in appealing to the Secretary General and to all existing multilateral fora to cooperate to ensure de-escalation of the conflict and the return to the negotiating table of all stakeholders to find a solution through political dialogue, direct negotiations, and all peaceful means para detener la violencia y ayudar a lograr una paz justa y duradera. La República Argentina condena la invasión a Ucrania y reitera a la Federación Rusa que cese inmediatamente en el uso ilegítimo de la fuerza, así como las operaciones militares en territorio ucraniano. Queremos destacar el mensaje del secretario general del día de ayer al referirse con mucha preocupación a la decisión del gobierno ruso de poner en alerta a sus fuerzas nucleares cuando dijo, y cito, este es un desarrollo escalofriante. La simple idea de un conflicto nuclear es inconcebible. Nada puede justificar el uso de armas nucleares. Fin de la cita. Hemos establecido principios claros con respecto a las armas de destrucción masiva, en particular el uso de las armas nucleares. Al mismo tiempo que defendemos el uso pacífico de la energía nuclear y la no proliferación, debemos avanzar hacia la destrucción total de un armamento que amenaza con la destrucción del planeta. Señor Presidente, hemos insistido en que en momentos como este, es imprescindible repetir la importancia de defender la Carta de las Naciones Unidas y el respeto por la preeminencia del derecho de las relaciones internacionales. Señor Presidente, ninguna, ninguna adquisición territorial puede ser reconocida como legal a partir del uso o la amenaza del uso de la fuerza. Es la lógica consecuencia del respeto por la soberanía e integridad territorial de todo Estado. El derecho internacional ha fijado principios generales que todos hemos reconocido y no podemos permitirnos el lujo de elegir cuándo son o no son aplicables tal y es como que todo atentado contra la integridad territorial de un Estado es contrario a los propósitos y principios de la Carta. No cabe duda, por otra parte, que el poder de la paz internacional se basa en la libertad, la igualdad, la justicia y el respeto de los derechos humanos de todos los estados sin distingos. Como lo expresara ayer el canciller argentino, Santiago Cafiero, en la reunión del Consejo de Derechos Humanos en Ginebra al referirse a la crisis de Ucrania, y hago cita, ¿cuál es la primera víctima en la guerra? ¿La verdad o los seres humanos? Creo que en estas horas de dolor e incertidumbre que debemos apegarnos a la preservación de la vida como el más supremo de los derechos humanos, fin de la cita. Por ello mismo, debemos encarar sin dilaciones las consecuencias del grave deterioro de la situación humanitaria generada en Ucrania. Con cientos de miles de desplazados y refugiados, es imprescindible que ellos puedan acceder de inmediato a una ayuda humanitaria efectiva y real, por lo que se deberá sin demora permitir el libre acceso de la misma. Ellos, sin mencionar que, como siempre, el conflicto armado en una región, tarde o temprano, habrá de alcanzar a otras en el impacto producido por migraciones forzadas, crisis humanitarias, hambrunas y enfermedades que habrán de asolar a poblaciones directas o indirectamente ligadas al conflicto. Escuchemos las palabras de su santidad. El Papa Francisco, cuando rogó a todas las partes implicadas que se abstengan de llevar a cabo cualquier acción que pueda causar aún más sufrimiento a las poblaciones, desestabilizando la convivencia entre las naciones y desprestigiando el derecho internacional. Creemos en el multilateralismo y la historia de las Naciones Unidas nos han demostrado cuán lejos podemos ir juntos. Sabemos 
es que no existe otra vía para afrontar los desafíos que esperan a la humanidad a la vuelta de la esquina. No vamos a cejar por ello en la defensa irrestricta de los principios de la Carta. Tenemos con ello un compromiso irrenunciable, muy especialmente con la paz. Muchas gracias. I thank the distinguished representative of Argentina. I now give the floor to Her Excellency Annalena Baerbock, Federal Minister for Foreign Affairs of Germany. Mr. President, Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. A baby girl was born in a metro station in Kiev just a few days ago. Her name, I've been told, is Mia. Her family was forced to shelter, just like millions of others across Ukraine. Shelter from bombs and rockets, from tanks and grenades. They live in fear, they live in pain. They are forced to separate from their loved ones because of Russia launching a war of aggression against Ukraine. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe today's vote is about Mia. It's a vote about the future of our children. It's about a future that is our choice. I'm standing here in front of you as my country's foreign minister, but I'm also standing here as a German who had the immense privilege of growing up in peace and security in Europe. After the end of the Second World War, after a ruthless war that was launched by Nazi Germany, the United Nations was founded 76 years ago to maintain peace and security. It was founded, as it says in the Charter, to save succeeding generations from the score of war, to save generations like mine but also generations like Mia's. The principles of the United Nations provide the framework for our peace, for an order that is based on common rules, on international law, on cooperation, and on the peaceful settlement of conflict. Russia has brutally attacked this order. And that is why this war is not only about Ukraine, not only about Europe, but about all of us. Russia's war marks the dawn of a new era. It's a watershed moment. Yesterday's certainties are gone. Today we face a new reality that none of us choose. It's a reality that President Putin has forced upon us. Russia's war is one of aggression and it's based on lies. They were repeated again by Foreign Minister Lavrov at the Human Rights Council today in Geneva. You say you are acting in self-defense, but the whole world watched as you built up your troops over months in the preparation for this attack. You say Russia is to protect Russian speaking from aggressions, but today the whole world is watching as you are bombing the homes of Russian-speaking Ukrainians in Kharkiv. You say Russia is sending peacekeepers, but your tanks are not carrying water. Your tanks are not carrying nutrition for babies. Your tanks are not carrying peace. Your tanks are carrying death and destruction. In fact, you are abusing your power as a permanent member of the Security Council. Mr. Lavrov, you can deceive yourself, but you won't deceive us. And you won't deceive our people, and you won't deceive your own people. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Russia's war marks a new reality. It re requires each and every one of us to take a firm and responsible decision and to take a side. My country is stepping up its support to Ukraine for medicine, for food, humanitarian goods, and shelter to refugees. So are many of us here today, and I applaud you for it. We know that there are rumors spreading also today in this room that people fleeing from Ukraine who are of African origin are being discriminated against at the US EU borders. I was in Poland this morning, and together with my Polish and my French colleagues, we made it very clear. Every refugee must receive protection, no matter what their nationality, no matter what their origin, no matter of the color of their skin. We have decided to support Ukraine also militarily, to defend itself against the aggressor in line with Article 51 of our Charter. Germany is deeply aware of its historic responsibility. That's why we are and will always be committed to diplomacy and seeking out peaceful solutions. But when our peaceful order comes under attack, we must face up to that new reality. We must act responsible. That's why we must unite for peace today. I've heard some of my colleagues say when I was phoning around the world in the last days, you are calling on us to show solidarity for Europe, but where have you been for us in the past? And frankly speaking, I want you to tell, I hear you, we hear you. And I truly believe we should always be willing to critically question our own actions, our past engagement in the world. And I'm willing to do so. But this, this is about now. This is about families sheltering in subway stations because their homes are being bombed. What's at stake is the life or death of Ukrainian people. What's at stake is Europe's security. What's at stake is our common charter of the United Nations. Almost every country represented here in this room has a larger or more powerful neighbor. This is about all of us, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I urge all of you to unite for peace and to vote yes to the resolution before us. If you are neutral in a situation of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. That's how Bishop Desmond Tutu once put it. Now we all have to choose between peace and aggression, between justice and the will of the strongest, between taking action and turning a blind eye. When we go home after our vote, each and every one of us will have to face our children, our partners, our friends, our families, at our kitchen tables. It is then when each and every one of us will have to look them in the eye and tell them what choice we made. I thank the distinguished representative of Germany, the Federal Minister for Foreign Affairs of Germany. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Thailand.
Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Thailand is gravely concerned with the worsening hostilities and violence as a result of the use of military force in Ukraine, which has led to loss of life, including of innocent civilians and destruction of property and civilian infrastructure. The ASEAN foreign ministers issued a statement on the situation in Ukraine on 26 February 2022. Since then, armed hostilities continue and casualties, including those of civilians, continue to rise. The humanitarian situation of refugees and those fleeing fighting is particularly worrying. Thailand commends Ukraine's neighboring countries and other states for their prompt actions in mobilizing assistance to those in pressing humanitarian needs. On our part, Thailand shall do our utmost in addressing the urgent humanitarian needs of the affected citizens directly and in partnership with like-minded international organizations. Thailand adheres to the principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter and international law. In particular, respect for the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and political independence of states, and refraining from the use of force or threat of use of force against another state. We thus call for the immediate cessation of violence and armed hostilities. The escalation of the situation will cause wider impacts for the world, aggravate humanitarian conditions, and threaten the well-being of the global economy, hampering the fragile recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thailand thus renews our call for dialogue and negotiations in order to find a peaceful settlement and sustainable solution through the United Nations, regional mechanisms, and other mutually acceptable modalities. In this regard, we welcome the recent efforts at bilateral talks between the parties concerned and look forward to them bearing fruitful results. As a peace-loving country, Thailand, Thailand has an abiding faith in the goodwill among nations and the compassion of humanity. We will therefore continue to hope that the path of peace, reconciliation, and good neighborliness will ultimately prevail. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Thailand. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Niger. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Mesdames and Messieurs, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, lorsque l'organisation des Nations Unies a été créée en 1945 à San Francisco, après les horreurs et destructions de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, c'était principalement et comme il est consigné dans la Charte pour sauver les générations futures du fléau de la guerre. Ce fut un véritable tour de force que les pères fondateurs de l'organisation ont réussi dans un contexte particulièrement difficile. Le principal objectif visé étant d'éviter les manquements de la Ligue des Nations qui ne lui ont pas permis de prévenir la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Cette ambition, il faut s'en féliciter. 
a permis au monde d'être à l'abri d'un conflit mondial pendant plus de 115 ans. La situation qui prévoit actuellement en Ukraine constitue une véritable source d'inquiétude en ce sens qu'elle met en péril le consensus de San Francisco qui fonde le système international d'après les deux. La crise en Ukraine constitue un empas douté un test majeur pour la viabilité du système à protéger et à donner des garanties de sécurité aux nations les plus grandes comme les plus petites. Fermement attaché à la défense des principes et idéaux de la Charte de San Francisco, le Niger réaffirme par ma foi sa ferme condamnation de l'utilisation de la force pour régler les différents entre L'action militaire entreprise par la Fédération de Russie contre l'Ukraine constitue à cet égard un acte que mon pays condamne et c'est pourquoi nous voterons en faveur de la résolution qui nous est soumise. Monsieur le Président, la session extraordinaire d'aujourd'hui intervient à un moment où notre monde fait face à l'un des périls les plus dangereux pour sa stabilité. Elle intervient à un moment où le Conseil de sécurité, dont c'est précisément la responsabilité au titre de la Charte, n'a pas pu se prononcer du fait de l'usage du veto par un de ses membres permanents. Pourtant, l'opération militaire russe contre l'Ukraine constitue ni plus ni moins une violation flagrante de la souveraineté et de l'intégrité territoriale des États membres de notre organisation, l'Ukraine. Face à ce défi, nous devons tout mettre en œuvre pour sauver la paix à tout prix. Les violences en cours, dont les victimes sont en majorité des femmes et des enfants, doivent cesser et les conditions du règlement pacifique de cette crise doivent être créées pour permettre le triomphe de cette paix. La paix dans cette région du monde doit dépasser le pacte de non-agression qui a prévalu jusque-là et dont nous voyons aujourd'hui les limites pour devenir un véritable pacte basé sur une coexistence fraternelle entre l'ensemble des États. À cet nous nous réjouissons d'ores et déjà du démarrage annoncé des discussions directes entre les délégations ukrainiennes et russes et encourageons les partis à faire tous les compromis nécessaires pour qu'une solution juste et durable soit trouvée à cette crise. Aucune concession ne sera de trop pour éviter aux populations civiles des souffrances indues. Dans ce sens, les bons offices du secrétaire général seront une contribution aussi importante inestimable. En ce moment où nous voyons des signes d'espoir avec l'ouverture de ce pour parler de paix, les partis doivent éviter les déclarations incendiaires et autres propos provocateurs ou triomphalistes de nature à faire dérailler le processus diplomatique en cours. Plus important encore, elles doivent cesser les hostilités. Sur le plan humanitaire, nous apprécions la générosité des pays voisins de l'Ukraine envers les civils qui ont fui les affrontements de ces derniers jours et appelons les Nations Unies et toute la communauté des donateurs à redoubler d'efforts pour venir en aide aux populations affectées par les violences aveugles, que rien, absolument rien ne peut justifier. Les ressortissants étrangers, y compris les étudiants, doivent également recevoir la protection nécessaire et leur rapatriement le cas échéant doit être organisé en coordination avec les autorités de leur pays d'origine. Tout traitement discriminatoire à l'égard des ressortissants africains pris au piège en Ukraine doit être proscrit car constituant une violation du droit international humanitaire. En ce moment où nous parlons de solidarité ici, et pour paraphraser un célèbre écrivain, il n'y a pas d'autre voie vers la solidarité humaine que la recherche et le respect de la dignité individuelle. Je voudrais pour conclure, Monsieur le Président, répéter que nous devons sauver la paix à tout prix. La paix que nous avons connue depuis plus de 115 ans, nous le savons aujourd'hui, loin d'être un luxe permanent, est un engagement permanent, une œuvre perpétuelle. Soyons à la hauteur de notre responsabilité historique en faisant preuve d'une volonté politique, du courage et de la vision nécessaire pour maintenir vivace la flamme de la paix pour le monde allumée avec vaillance à San Francisco. Je vous remercie de votre aimable attention.
I thank the distinguished representative of Niger. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Nicaragua. Señor presidente, Mr. Nicaragua reitera su compromiso Nicaragua con el respeto a la soberanía, la integridad territorial y la seguridad de todos los países. Los Estados miembros debemos cumplir empáticamente con los propósitos y principios de la Carta de la ONU. Aplica para todos los Estados This miembros to all member de Naciones Unidas. Of the United Nations. Urge la desescalada de las tensiones, We call for a de teniendo siempre en cuenta los legítimos intereses de seguridad de todos los países de esa región y en particular de la Federación de Rusia y Ucrania, con el objetivo de garantizar la paz with the purpose of guaranteeing a largo plazo peace and stability in the long region, term in that region and beyond, Tal y como in lo accordance with los de Minsk. the Minsk agreements. Nicaragua considera que las negociaciones Nicaragua entre Rusia believes that negotiations between Russia and Ukraine are key los esfuerzos diplomáticos for ramping up diplomatic y de esa efforts and in this way guaranteeing security and OTAN peace se ha empeñado en desconocer los acuerdos que en diferentes momentos fueron asumidos con la Federación Rusa, luego de la disolución de la Unión porque queremos la paz y creemos en la prevención y solución de conflictos por medios pacíficos, rechazamos las medidas unilaterales, tales como sanciones políticas, económicas y de todo tipo, que se están lanzando contra la Federación Rusa por los Estados Unidos y la OTAN, a la par que multiplican el envío de armamento a Ucrania, lo que deja a la vista que los Estados This Unidos y OTAN ya están involucrados en este conflicto que tiene dimensiones globales. Global Toda esta escalada lo que hace es alimentar la guerra con la dolorosa secuela de muertos, heridos, migraciones masivas de familias casualties and massive migrations of families who are victims of these hegemonic policies. These policies are already having a serious impact on the global planeta, economy. Víctima. And the people of this planet are the victims of this crisis, which is yet another crisis in the aftermath of the loss of life and damage due to the economy resulting from the virus which unleashed a pandemic on the world. Debe desempeñar un United papel Nations constructivo must play en la resolución role de la cuestión de Ucrania y dar prioridad a la paz, la estabilidad regionales y la seguridad universal de todos los países y no promover tensiones o acciones que escalen el conflicto. Or actions which will Señor Presidente, the conflict. este lamentable conflicto President, y pérdida de vidas se pudo haber evitado. No tenía por qué suceder. Todo es producto del irrespeto y las violaciones All a la Carta de Naciones Unidas, producto de políticas injerencistas 
en los asuntos internos de los estados que dieron lugar al golpe de estado en Ucrania en el 2014 y los ataques y bombardeos contra la población de Donetsk y Lugansk, provocando la muerte de miles de personas. Este es un hecho que no se puede olvidar. Ya es la hora, es el momento de evitar una hecatombe total y llamamos a la OTAN, a Naciones Unidas y a la comunidad internacional a alentar, respaldar con firmeza el diálogo y la negociación para la paz entre la Federación Rusa y Ucrania, que son los que tienen la autoridad y la fortaleza para alcanzar la paz estable, duradera y segura en esa región de nuestro planeta. Por lo tanto, no es con políticas de doble, de doble rasero o estándares que fortaleceremos un mundo de paz. Es con unidad, solidaridad y hermandad entre nuestros pueblos. Es con esfuerzos con políticas de paz y desarrollo. Es con esfuerzos y soluciones diplomáticas que lograremos la paz y la seguridad internacional. Repetimos. Y no es con políticas Let me say de doble again, rasero. Expresamos nuestras condolencias a las familias que en Ucrania han sufrido la pérdida de seres queridos. Igualmente, a las familias de los soldados de Ucrania y de la Federación, de, de la Federación Rusa que han fallecido en el conflicto. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. I thank the distinguished representative of Nicaragua. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Romania. Mr. President, Romania aligns itself with a statement delivered by the European Union. I will now make a few remarks in national capacity. The world today is at threat by Russia's unprovoked, unjustified military aggression against Ukraine, and recently by bringing its nuclear arsenal at high alert. This affects not only the European security, but also the security at global level. At these difficult moments, Romania and the Romanian people stand in full solidarity with Ukraine and with its people facing this aggression, including through providing shelter for the tens of thousands of Ukrainians, mostly elderly, women and children. We reaffirm our support for the sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized border. Romania strongly condemns such irresponsible behavior, which gravely violates the international law. By unleashing the aggression against Ukraine, Russia has broken all its international commitments, first of all, the United Nations Charter. Thus, we strongly call for a responsible behavior from Russia and the plea to avoid more loss of life and preserve the safety of civilian population. Therefore, Russian Federation should immediately cease its use of force against Ukraine and withdraw immediately, completely and unconditionally all of its military forces from the territory of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. 
Romania reiterates its full solidarity with Ukraine and with the Ukrainian people. We stand ready to continue to support our neighbor, including by providing humanitarian assistance. Romania also expressed support for the new ambitious package of extended sanctions against Russia, including the disconnection of certain Russian banks from SWIFT and the closure of EU airspace for Russian aircraft. We underline the decision of the Romanian authorities to support the neighboring state Ukraine by donating protective equipment, fuel, food, water, and medicines amounting to more than 3 million euros, in addition to the contributions already sent until now. Romania joins all the United Nations countries that voiced their call on the Russian Federation to abide by the principles set forth in the United Nations Charter and the Declaration on Friendly Relations, as well as to abide by the Minsk agreements and to work constructively in relevant international frameworks, including in the Normandy format and trilateral contact group towards their full implementation. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Romania. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Montenegro. Mr. President, Montenegro aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union. Please allow me to highlight some issues in my national capacity. We are gathered here today in response to the blatant violation of the UN Charter of International Law and of the Sovereignty and Territorial Integrity of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. The escalation of security situation due to the Russian aggression against Ukraine is extremely alarming. This unjustified and unprovoked military aggression constitutes yet another flagrant violation of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, UN Charter and International Law. It puts lives of millions of people at risk and represents a clear and present threat to peace and security in Europe and beyond. We condemn these actions and call on Russia to immediately, completely and unconditionally stop all fighting and withdraw all of its forces from the territory of Ukraine. The dangerous rhetoric, including the raising of nuclear alert levels, must stop. This rhetoric can only lead to further escalation and increasing the risk of catastrophic miscalculation. We also condemn the involvement of Belarus in this aggression against Ukraine and call on it to abide by its international obligations. Mr. President, regrettably, the Security Council failed its primary responsibility for the maintenance of international peace and security because of the veto cast by one permanent member. Therefore, we welcome the decision of the Security Council to refer the matter to the General Assembly. We reiterate that the only way to achieve lasting peace is through diplomatic means. There can be no military solution to the conflict. Peaceful settlement of disputes and refraining from the threat or use of force are fundamental principles of international law in line with the UN Charter and the Helsinki Final Act. To this end, Russia must take concrete steps and abide by its international commitments. Halt its military operation and return to the negotiating table. We call on Russia to choose peace instead of war. The increased hostilities have resulted in a growing number of civilian casualties and damage to critical civilian infrastructure, triggering severe humanitarian consequences on people in the hardest hit areas. Given the gravity of the situation, we reiterate the call for allowing and facilitating the rapid, safe and unhindered access of humanitarian assistance to those in need. Mr. President, the shadow of war is now looming in Europe. Russian actions are putting the whole European security architecture and rule-based international order in danger. No one can be content with this situation. There is only one way to remedy this situation that in our view favors no single state, but rather aims at restoring stability and security in Europe. It is a path of diplomacy and upholding the principles of the UN Charter. 
Against the backdrop of the current events, we call on all international actors to pay special attention to preserving stability and security in the Western Balkans due to the possible further destabilization of the region. Being a part of Europe, we cherish the same European and Euro-Atlantic values and principles. We are convinced that only acceleration of integration processes and a stronger incentive of our partners can be a barrier to the malicious influence of the third parties. Investing in stability and prosperity of the region is therefore investment in sustainable security and stability of Europe. This is a turning point in the history of Europe. The very core principles of international law that the United Nations stand for are violated. We cannot let anyone take away these principles. We all must demonstrate responsible behavior and commitments towards unanimously agreed and accepted norms and principles of international law. Those who violate these principles must be held accountable. For all these reasons, Montenegro will vote in favor of the resolution at the end of this session and call others to do the same. In conclusion, Montenegro firmly stands in solidarity with the, uh, Ukraine and its people in these difficult times and confirm its steadfast support to the sovereignty, independence, unity and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Montenegro. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative, San Marino. Mr. President, San Marino aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union, and I would like to express now the following comments in my national capacity. The Republic of San Marino is following the events in Ukraine with utmost concern. The number of casualties of the wounded and displaced people, including children, is dramatically increasing. People are living in constant danger, fear, and insecurity. Day and night, men, women, and children are fleeing their homes with nothing but hope. History teaches us that war is not the answer. War is just destruction, and as such, has always been and always will be deplored by the Republic of San Marino. We call on the parties to immediately stop this war, which is jeopardizing international peace and security on, global, on a global scale. We need to live up to the principles of the United Nations Charter. San Marino strongly condemns the use of war and violence and promotes any multilateral and bilateral diplomatic initiative inspired by the principles of the promotion of dialogue and peace, the defense of human rights and international law. We reiterate our support for the sovereignty, territorial integrity, unity and independence of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders. We call on the parties to return to dialogue and to work for a negotiated solution. Today, we have at our disposal a range of international mechanisms and organizations to stimulate dialogue promote negotiations and resolve conflict. A number of states have adopted restrictive measures in response to the military aggression by the Russian Federation. To this day, some, the San Marino legal system provided that only the sanctions of the Security Council were adopted and implemented at the national level. In light of the dramatic situation in Ukraine, yesterday the government of San Marino initiated the legislative procedure to allow the adoption of other sanctions. In the coming day, Parliament and the competent national authorities will evaluate how to apply other such sanctions in our legal system. Mr. President, after long years of conflict, the Ukrainian population is now facing even more violence and suffering. The Republic of San Marino is very concerned for the conditions of civilians, which are in need of urgent humanitarian assistance. We deplore and condemn the acts of aggression against civilian infrastructures, the attacks and the use of explosive weapons on populated areas have no possible justification. We call on the parties involved in the conflict to strictly uphold international humanitarian law, 
human rights law and to protect civilians and their essential services. Furthermore, the Republic of San Marino is greatly concerned by the Russian decision to put their nuclear weapons forces on high alert. This is incredibly dangerous and inconceivable. Nothing can justify the use or treat of use of nuclear weapons. Mr. President, San Marino has sponsored and will vote in favor of the draft resolution which is now before the Assembly. The Republic of San Marino stands in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and joins the pressing call for peace coming from the streets of the entire world. Silence the weapons and return to dialogue and negotiations. Let peace prevail. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of San Marino. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Cyprus. Mr. President, fully subscribing to the statement of the European Union, my delegation adds its voice to the condemnation of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We stand in solidarity with Ukraine and reiterate our support to its unity, sovereignty, and territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. The Secretary General's statements have been unequivocal. Such actions are in direct conflict with the United Nations Charter. The use of force is the repudiation of the principles that every country in this hall has committed to uphold. Cyprus condemns, condemns any breach of international peace and security affected through military action by any state against the independence, sovereignty, and territorial integrity of another. As a small state, which relies for its security on the global rules-based order, with the UN at its core, Cyprus is deeply concerned about the effectiveness of our system of collective security. We have sponsored the resolution before us, mindful of the critical juncture for the future of the United Nations and the international order it established. We deplore the human suffering and loss of life, as well as the massive displacement caused by the hostilities, a consequence of war that Cyprus is only too familiar with for nearly 50 years now. While we take note of the talks initiated yesterday between the Russian Federation and Ukraine, I hope that diplomacy will prevail and lead to the peaceful resolution of this conflict, we stress the need for full compliance with international humanitarian law, for an immediate ceasefire, and for the withdrawal of, the, of Russian military forces from Ukrainian territory. We also reiterate that the urgent need to reverse unlawful acts, including the recognition of the self-proclaimed independence of the separatist areas in eastern Ukraine. Furthermore, deeply concerned about the current level of nuclear threat, we fully support the recent remarks by the UN Undersecretary General and High Representative for Disarmament Affairs that the raising of nuclear alert levels by the Russian Federation only increases the risk of catastrophic miscalculation. There are no victors with nuclear weapons, only victims. Restraint, de-escalation, and risk reduction are urgently required for the sake of all our security. In closing, Cyprus, as a victim itself of foreign invasion and ongoing occupation, 
stresses in the strongest possible terms that the situation in Ukraine constitutes a flagrant violation of international law and undermines the rules-based international order. There is only one way out, diplomacy, not war. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Cyprus. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Portugal. Mr. President, Portugal aligns itself with the statement delivered by the European Union. A few additional remarks in our national capacity. Mr. President, we strongly condemn the unprovoked aggression by the Russian Federation against Ukraine, in violation of international law and the UN Charter. Russian milita military forces must immediately and completely withdraw from the territory of Ukraine. We remain in full solidarity with Ukraine, and we reiterate our unwavering support to the sovereignty, territorial integrity, and independence of Ukraine within its international recognized borders. We deeply regret the loss of lives and the mounting human suffering inflicted to the Ukrainian people. The continuing deterioration of the humanitarian situation is alarming, with an increasing number of internal displaced persons and refugees in need of humanitarian assistance. This rapidly escalating tragedy requires international solidarity. We therefore fully support the efforts coordinated by the UN to address the humanitarian consequences of the conflict. We extend our gratitude for the generosity and solidarity shown by Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania and the Republic of Moldova in hosting and assisting persons fleeing from the scourge of war. We support these humanitarian efforts and are ready to welcome Ukraines who wish to continue their lives in Portugal. Mr. President, the draft resolution before us is a timely and necessary step, fully justified by the increasing, increasingly dire situation faced by Ukraine and its people a situation that we need to address collectively. We strongly encourage other member states to vote in favor of this draft resolution. Mr. President, to conclude, we fully support the good offices of the Secretary General and the continued efforts by the UN system. We urge the Russian Federation to completely abandon its military offensive and to participate constructively in negotiations with Ukraine. As emphasized by the, by the UN Secretary General, and I start quoting, it is never too late to engage in good faith negotiations and to address all issues peacefully, end of quoting. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Portugal. I now give the floor to the representative of Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Mr. President, 
yesterday, the situation of the Ukraine is now focusing attention of the international society. The root cause of the Ukraine crisis totally lies in the hegemonic policy of the United States and the West, which indulge themselves in high-handedness and arbitrariness toward other countries. The United States and the West have systematically undermined security environment in Europe by ignoring reasonable and just demands of the Russian Federation for legal guarantee for security, while pursuing NATO's eastward expansion and more blunted attempting to deploy attack weapon system. We clearly remember how Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya's sovereignty and territorial integrity were violated by United States and West in the past under the pretext of international peace and security. It is absurd for United States and West that have devastated Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya to mention the respects of sovereignty and territorial integrity of a situation of the Ukraine that does not stand to reason at all. It is characteristic of the current international order that seeds of discord are sown in every original country where United States interfere, past the relations between countries are deteriorating. Greatest danger the world faces now is the high-handedness and arbitrariness by United States and its followers that were shaking international peace and stability at the basis. The reality proved clearly once again the peace would never settle on the world at any time as long as there remains unilateral and double-dealing policy of the United States with threatening peace and security of a sovereign state. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Zambia. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished guests, the Republic of the, the Government of the Republic of Zambia notes with grave concern the deteriorating situation in Ukraine and calls for an immediate cessation of hostilities between the two parties. The two parties concerned should seek peaceful means in order to find an amicable solution to the current conflict. As a peace-loving nation and an advocate of nonviolent means for resolving conflict, Zambia joins the international community in calling for a peaceful resolution and diplomatic dialogue on the situation in Ukraine. Mr. President, the military aggression by the Russian Federation in Ukraine is regrettable and should therefore be discontinued. Zambia welcomes the meeting that was held between the Russian Federation and the Ukrainian delegation, which we believe was a step in the right direction. All international actors are obliged to respect international law and uphold the Charter of the United Nations. We therefore call upon both Russia and Ukraine to agree to an immediate ceasefire in line with the principles of the United Nations Charter. It is incumbent upon both parties to prevent any further loss of human lives and property, as well as displacement of more people in Ukraine. Mr. President, we are all cognizant that the entire world stands to lose in the perpetuation of such 
and any other world conflict. Zambia therefore looks forward to an immediate peaceful resolution and a return to normalcy in Ukraine, as well as to reach an agreeable peaceful outcome of this situation without further escalation of violence. Mr. President, Zambia supports this draft resolution. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Zambia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Bangladesh. Mr. President, thank you for convening the 11th Emergency Special Session of the United Nations General Assembly. Bangladesh expresses grave concern at the situation in Ukraine and calls for immediate cessation of the ongoing hostilities and military operations in the Ukrainian territory. We believe that the obligations stipulated in the Charter of the United Nations regarding prohibition of use of force, respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, and peaceful settlement of international disputes must be complied with in all circumstances without exception. Bangladesh, therefore, urges for restraint by all parties and to immediately resume diplomatic efforts and dialogue in order to settle all disputes by peaceful means and refrain from taking any action that may endanger international peace and security. Bangladesh expresses its full support and confidence in the good offices of the Secretary General of the United Nations and calls upon him to undertake all efforts to initiate dialogue with a view to ending the hostilities and military operations in Ukraine. Bangladesh is deeply concerned at the sufferings of innocent civilians and urges the parties to ensure access for safe delivery of humanitarian assistances to the people in need and safe passage to civilians, including foreign nationals fleeing conflict in Ukraine. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Bangladesh. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of North Macedonia. Mr. President, Excellencies, colleagues, at the outset, I will allow me to reiterate and to reaffirm again that North Macedonia supports the independence, sovereignty, the territorial integrity of Ukraine within its international recognized borders. North Macedonia aligns itself with the EU statement delivered earlier on this emergency special session of the United Nations General Assembly. In my national capacity, I would like to add the following. Unprovoked Russian aggression against Ukraine is a blatant violation of international law and all principles enshrined in the Charter, and above all, the values of humanity. Hearing the sirens of war in this day and age in the heart of Europe is still hard to believe. The invasion of Ukraine by Russia is an attack on the territorial integrity and sovereignty of a member state of the United Nations. It presents a flagrant violation of the basic principles of international law, a blow to the democratic and rule-based international order. North Macedonia strongly condemns the decision of Moscow to opt for the path of war 
which is clear act of aggression against independent country. This is violent display of power, which curtail our joint efforts to find a peaceful solution to the crisis that seriously threatens the peace and stability in Europe and beyond. The military action of Russia against Ukraine is causing loss of life and devastating damage of civilian infrastructure. North Macedonia particularly expressed great concern about announcement by Russia of its readiness to rise the nuclear alert level. For decades, we have been investing in peace and prosperity. No one should abuse foundation of the United Nations system. We call on the Russian Federation to stop the invasion and to refrain from further military actions. We call for immediate restoration of peace in order to give headway to diplomatic engagement. Mr. President, this is not the first time and once again, due to the decisions of the Russian Federation, we are facing a narrative built on the ruins of the past and its negative legacies, disrupting the freedom, values, and the gains of the modern, democratic, and civilized world. By itself, this is also a direct violation of human rights and an attack on the foundation of peace and prosperity, which we have invested in for decades now. North Macedonia condemns all violation of human rights. We join others in expressing grave concern for the reports which confirms attacks on civilian facilities such as kidney gardens, schools, and hospitals, including daily reports of civilian casualties, among them children, women, and the elderly. On one of the last sessions of the United Nations Security Council, the Russian Federation stated they cannot stay indifferent when the basic human right, human right, right to life of Russian citizens is endangered in jeopardy. Right now, the question is, how about the right of life to life of others? There is no and cannot be supremacy over this right. That's universal for all persons. The free world is watching and, and is asking the right to life to be fully respected by Russia immediately. Mr. President, today the free world is renouncing the acts of aggression and we should stand united again against this wrongdoing. Despite numerous calls by the international community for de-escalation, peaceful resolution, and above all reasons still, people of Ukraine feel the real and devastating consequences of war. But not just Ukraine. The whole world is facing the ugly face of war. The Russian Federation has a prime responsibility for this. No matter how disturbing and discouraging the latest development on the ground are, we should continue to relentlessly work on a diplomatic solution, avoiding further escalation. We need to be persistent in finding a peaceful solution. Dialogue in these moments is crit critical. We call on the Russian Federation to stop the invasion and to refrain from further military actions. We appreciate the efforts of the Secretary General and the United Nations, which aim to de-escalate the current situation, and we welcome all efforts through the Normandy format or OSC Trilateral Contact Group in defusing tensions. It is also imperative to ensure the safety of the OSC SMM personnel. As a member of the OSC Troika, we remain fully engaged in providing support to these efforts and still believe that multilateralism should overcome militarism. For these reasons, amongst the others, we have co-sponsored the draft resolution and we call all peace-loving states to vote in favor for the resolution as well. We also commend the efforts of the main sponsors in drafting this resolution. In these difficult times, we have to stand by Ukraine and its people, hopeful that reason will prevail. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of North Macedonia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of one word.
Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Vanuatu aligns its statement with a statement made by Fiji as chair of the Pacific Island Forum. Today, we are meeting at a critical time because the UN Security Council did not adopt the resolution on the Ukraine and Russia conflict. And now, we are in this special emergency session of the UN General Assembly to discuss the very same matter. The failure of the UN Security Council to adopt the Ukraine-Russia resolution signifies the shortcomings of the body to maintain international peace and security. The UN General Assembly discussion of this matter is important because of its universal membership and small states like Vanuatu can provide their views on the situation and to also express our solidarity with the peoples and government of Ukraine. As we all know, there were several attempts made in the past for a diplomatic solution. However, this was not possible. As a result, today there is a war between Ukraine and Russia. As we speak, lives are lost and there is a looming humanitarian crisis. As a small state, Vanuatu does not have a military might, no nuclear weapons, but Vanuatu believes in the international rule of law and the right to self-determination of peoples and countries. Vanuatu is deeply concerned with the crisis and calls for all for the parties involved to respect international law, the territorial integrity and national sovereignty of Ukraine. Vanuatu further calls for safe humanitarian access to all affected areas and urge all parties involved to ensure that this happens. The rights of the people to food, water, shelter, and medicines must be guaranteed. Furthermore, we urge that the rights of the vulnerable peoples, the minorities, and the people of African descent must be protected. To this end, Vanuatu calls for the international human rights and humanitarian law must always be respected in these uncertain times. Mr. President, Vanuatu calls for an immediate ceasefire and urge all parties to peacefully resolve the conflict in a manner that is consistent with the principles of UN Charter and international law. To conclude, Vanuatu would like to remind all members of the United Nations that we all agreed to abide to the principles and purposes of the UN Charter when we decided to join this important body. This is irrespective of whether one is a small or a large powerful country. Today, we urgently need to translate these ideals into practice to ensure that international peace and security is guaranteed for all. I thank you for your attention. I thank the distinguished representative of Vanuatu. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Haiti. Monsieur le Président, Mr. President, le General, Distinguished Secretary General, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, one of the primary purposes of the United Nations is to maintain international peace and security while developing nations. friendly relations among Ce nations. This noble goal capital, is of particular actuel, importance not just for our world, future. but also for future generations. Pourquoi? And that is why we must do everything possible to preserve it and, if need be, 
to bolster these friendly relations. On that score, the painful and tragic situation unfolding in Ukraine following the unjustified invasion of that country by the Russian Federation is extremely worrisome. This is a very serious threat to global peace, security, and stability. We must all work together to avoid a dangerous escalation of this armed conflict, particularly after the decision by Moscow to set its nuclear forces on alert. We congratulate the Secretary General for his efforts. The Republic of Haiti wanted to add its voice to appeals worldwide calling for a cessation of hostilities and the search for a solution to this conflict through diplomatic means. In a statement issued on the 23rd of February 2022, the government of Haiti urged the parties concerned to act with restraint and to avoid becoming embroiled in actions which might destabilize the region, threaten peace, and impact global trade. We are appealing for further diplomatic efforts towards a peaceful solution and respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. My country reaffirms its commitment to the norms and principles of international law and to respect for the United Nations Charter. These alone can guarantee global peace and security. The Republic of Haiti also encourages further talks which have already begun in Belarus between the Russian and Ukrainian delegations. Mr. President, this action of war has already cost thousands of lives, including the lives of children, women, and older persons, and has caused considerable damage in Ukraine. It has led to a massive flow of people fleeing the battlefield and seeking refuge in neighboring countries. We welcome the actions taken by the United Nations to provide assistance to victims and we encourage member states of the United Nations, in particular European countries, to continue to welcome with dignity the thousands of refugees, whoever they may be, who are now knocking on their doors. We call for the full and complete implementation of the fundamental principles of international humanitarian law, which is guided by the principles of humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence, voluntarism, unity, and universality. Thank you. And in conclusion, Votre en faveur du projet de résolution Haiti will also vote in favor of the resolution before us. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Haiti. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Tonga. Mr. President, Secretary General, please allow me at the outset to register on record the historical occurrence of this gathering, convened as an emergency special session of the General Assembly after several decades. This response is evidence of the seriousness of the yearning situation unfolding in Ukraine. Tonga stands in solidarity with, with Ukraine and all those affected. Sadly, valuable lives have been lost due to this conflict and there are bereaved families. Tonga conveys its sincere condolences to the families of the victims of the conflict. Mr. President, 
We support the draft resolution before us, along with the assessment made by the Secretary General of the United Nations that violations of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of a UN member state are inconsistent with the principles of the United Nations Charter. Tonga is a small country in the South Pacific Ocean trying to recover from a recent natural tragedy, which was an unprecedented volcanic eruption and tsunami that occurred on the 15th of January 2022, which was beyond the control of Tonga. The tragedy in Ukraine today is of a different cause, that is man-made, and it could have been avoided, unlike the tragedy in Tonga. So Tonga greatly sympathizes with Ukraine, who is trying to survive this ordeal, let alone recovering from it. Tonga is most grateful to the United Nations, NGOs, civil societies, regional bodies, member states of the United Nations who have provided help to Tonga and stood in solidarity uh, with Tonga during the, its ordeal. Likewise, Tonga calls on these faithful partners again to help Ukraine in its ordeal. As a small state and a fellow member of this august body, we stand to uphold the principles of the UN Charter and we support peaceful dialogue and negotiations. Therefore, Tonga has co-sponsored the draft resolution currently before the General Assembly, and it will vote yes on it in support of Ukraine against Russia's aggression. It is in the spirit of benevolence and constructive engagement that we join the statement delivered by Fiji, the chair of the Pacific Islands Forum, to call upon the good conscience of all parties to pursue every possible means available to de-escalate the situation and return to the path of diplomacy. And by doing so, we beseech upon our good friends in both parties to consider an immediate ceasefire and safe humanitarian access to affected areas while upholding the principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter. Mr. President, in conclusion, it is our fervent hope that holding this emergency special session of the General Assembly will restore the spirit of cooperation and dialogue among all parties. Like many of my good colleagues who have eloquently said it before me, there is always time for de-escalation and dialogue. We encourage all parties to favorably consider this way forward thereby upholding peace and security in the spirit of multilateralism that we all aspire to. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Tonga. I now give the floor to the representative of Democratic Republic of the Congo. Monsieur le Président, Excellence, Mr. President, Mesdames et Messieurs, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ma délégation voudrait saisir cette occasion pour réitérer notre attachement aux principes fondamentaux de la Charte des Nations Unies et aux droits internationaux. Le respect de l'intégrité territoriale et de la souveraineté de tous les pays par tous les États membres constitue pour ma délégation un élément fondamental pour la paix et la sécurité internationale. Bien plus, c'est une règle d'or this is a intangible rule, que tout État membre de l'ONU se doit de respecter en tout lieu et en toutes circonstances. Au vu de sa propre uh, expérience vécue, la République démocratique du Congo n'est pas ni directement ni indirectement cautionnée 
la violation de la souveraineté et de l'intégrité territoriale de n'importe quel État membre en général et de l'Ukraine en particulier. Ce sont ces principes qui guide l'action de son Excellence, Monsieur le Président de la République. Son Excellence, Félix Antoine Tshiseke du Chilombo, dans son déploiement diplomatique dans le Concert des Nations. En vertu de principes consacrés par la Chambre des Nations Unies, de résoudre le conflit par de moyens pacifiques, nous saluons tous les efforts visant à encourager le dialogue et à ouvrir la voie aux négociations diplomatiques afin d'aboutir à une solution pacifique à l'avantage de deux parties dont le peuple par ce quoi partage de liens étroits. La voie de la escalade, des escalades et le choix de la diplomatie demeure donc et encore une alternative importante à explorer. Ma délégation reste préoccupée par cette situation dont les répercussions incalculables peuvent déstabiliser le fragile équilibre dans la région de l'Europe orientale et même au-delà. Nous devons voir les conséquences humanitaires et économiques qui pourraient Nous saluons la solidarité internationale qui a permis aux pays limitrophes de l'Ukraine d'ouvrir leurs frontières pour accueillir toutes les personnes déplacées et leur apporter l'assistance nécessaire. En même temps, nous souhaitons que cette expression d'empathie à l'endroit des déplacés s'efface sans discrimination. Voilà pourquoi ma délégation soutient l'appel du secrétaire général des Nations Unies pour donner une chance à la paix. Nous joignons notre voix à celle de toute la communauté internationale représentée dans cette salle pour rappeler, pour rappeler à la paix et demander aux deux parties de rejoindre la table de négociation. Je vous remercie. Je remercie le de la démocratique république du Congo. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Nigeria. Mr. President of the General Assembly, Your Excellencies, Distinguished delegates, I have the honor to speak on behalf of my country, Nigeria. When this statement was prepared a week ago, the situation in Ukraine had not deteriorated into a war. We are just going to comment on the issue of the temporary occupied territories of Ukraine and urge de-escalation. It is, however, a sad development that we are in the current position we are in. Nigeria believes that the violations of international law and the UN Charter as regards Ukraine or any other similar situation should be an issue of great concern to the freedom parties as well as, well as to all members of the United Nations. Also, as consistent with international law, we believe that borders of countries are sacrosanct and their sanctity must be always upheld. This is a fundamental issue that there should be no derogation from. We believe that a rules-based world order is essential for our common security. The violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity or of any other nation, including any illegal occupation and annexation, is unacceptable. The invasion of Ukraine has implications for all of us, but more importantly, the pull of Ukraine, the loss of human life, as well as the welcome destruction of life and properties what is us. And it is important that all parties involved begin direct talks to put an end to this war. It is important to remember that the most important people in this crisis are the millions of people whose life is made even more unbearable. All parties have responsibility to protect the civilian population, and it is important that this is prioritized. Accordingly, we appeal that all our energy should be focused on ending this needless war 
by focusing on the Pacific settlement of disputes. It is our hope that in line with relevant United Nations General Assembly resolutions and the UN Charter, all parties will do what is best for the people of Ukraine. Mr. President, we urge Russia to halt all military action and revert to status quo. We also appeal that negotiations should be held in good faith with the United Nations playing a prominent role. Countries with influence on the parties should redouble their diplomatic and related efforts to bring this conflict to a mutually satisfying end for both parties. This is in the interest of peace, justice, and solidarity. This war has refused, Mr. President, in conclusion, I wish to note that this war has resulted in so much death and displacement, and we must work to ensure that they find urgent solution. We believe that all actions that threaten sovereignty and territorial integrity as recognized in international law should be stopped. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Nigeria. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Mauritius. Thank you, Mr. President. Mauritius is a small island state and among the very few countries in the world which do not possess an army. We strongly believe in the core values and principles enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations and the respect for international law, which is the cornerstone for a rules-based world order. We also believe and have faith in our organization and its immense responsibility and inescapable role for the promotion of a peaceful and prosperous world. It is therefore with great preoccupation that Mauritius joins other delegations in expressing its deep concern on the unfolding situation in Ukraine. We deplore the loss of lives and damage caused to civilian infrastructure and the increasing number of internally displaced persons which is heavily impacting the region. The threat or use of force against the sovereignty, territorial integrity, or political independence of any state is inconsistent with the charter and principles of the United Nations. Mauritius supports the call of the Secretary General and the international community for an immediate end to hostilities. We appeal to all parties to respect international humanitarian law and prevent violations and abuses of human rights. Mr. President, our organization came into being with a sacrosanct mission of maintaining international peace and security. We should all strive so that our 21st century is free from the cycle of violence and conflicts. No matter what part of the world we are from, we are basically the same human being. We seek peace, happiness, and try to avoid suffering. This is a defining moment for our organization. We need to support de-escalation and assist all parties in seeking a peaceful resolution of this conflict. Mauritius strongly urges the path of dialogue and negotiations. We hope the beginning of direct talks will restore peace and normalcy in the region. Mr. President, let us stand united in our resolve for lasting peace. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Mauritius.
I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Tunisia. Sayyid al-Rais, Ashab Saad al-Zumara. Mr. President, Excellencies, the General Assembly is dealing with the situation in Ukraine for a second time in less than a week, which reflects the critical situation during which this extraordinary session is held in view of what the region has been witnessing for the last few days from dangerous military escalation. Tunisia follows with grave concern and preoccupation the implications of that situation on civilians and the stability of Europe and the world. Tunisia, which holds that the, the, that the international community will find a solution to this crisis, considers the, the present condition as a threat and calls on all parties to intensify their efforts to reach a ceasefire and to stop the escalation so that all new civilians will be safe from more suffering in view of the increasing number of refugees and the difficulties the humanitarian situation is facing as well as loss of lives. The ceasefire and the escalation are essential at this stage of the crisis in order to save to stop more complications and situations, more efforts should be deployed to urge the consent parties to resort to dialogue and negotiations and to work construct constructively to reach a last long-lasting settlement for this dispute through peaceful means and to restore peace and stability. There is no choice to solve this problem except through dialogue in our view. The means agreements which were adopted by the Security Council in its resolution 2202 of 2015 is one of the options available in order to overcome this problem. In this respect, we hope that negotiations will continue so that parties will commit themselves to activate these agreements and to seek a solution that will realize peace and stability. Mr. President, the UN was established in 1945 to save the further relations from the scourge of war. The countries and people committed themselves at that time to live in peace and good neighborliness, and for that purpose they agreed to commit themselves to a group of basic principles which were enshrined in the Charter, which after 77 years remains our reference and the framework that regulates peaceful relations between different states. Tunisia affirms that the respect of the principles and provisions of the UN Charter is basic and essential to maintain international peace and security in the world and is one of the basic components of multilateral work enable the UN organization to fulfill the mandate for which it was created. Sir, we thank you for the floor. I thank the distinguished representative of Tunisia. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Qatar. Thank you, Mr. President. The resolution of the General Assembly uniting for peace according to this extraordinary session refers to one of the main objectives for which the UN has been established, maintenance of international peace and security, developing of friendly relations between the countries. As member states in this organization, we should deploy all efforts in order to realize these two objectives. لقد شهد 
العالم خلال الأيام الماضية مجددا ما يترتب على العنف المسلح من ويلات المؤالات وتتابع دولة قطر بقلق بالغة التطورات الجارية في أوكرانيا وتداعياتها الإنسانية علاوة على التداعيات الخطيرة للتصعيد المتسارع على السلم والأمن الدوليين وكذلك على الاقتصاد والأمن الغذائي في أنحاء العالم وعليه فإن دولة قطر تحف جميع الأطراف على ضغط النفس وتجنب المزيد من التصعيد والتزام السبل السلمية والدبلوماسية لتسوية المنازعات والخلافات سيد الرئيس إن مبادئ السياسة الخارجية لدولة قطر تقوم على الالتزام بأغراض ومبادئ وأحكام الميثاق بما فيها أحكام المادة الثانية بخصوص حظ المنازعات الدولية بالوسائل السلمية والامتناع عن التهديد باستعمال القوة أو استخدامها ضد سلامة الأراضي أو الاستقلال السياسي لأي دولة ومن منطلق التزام دولة قطر بهذه الأحكام فإنها تؤكد على احترام سيادة أوكرانيا واستقلالها ووحدتها وسلامة أراضي في حدودها المعترف بها دوليا سيد الرئيس لدولة قطر على قناعة بأن السبيل لتسوية الأزمة الراهنة وتلبية المشاغل المشروعة لجميع الأطراف هو الحوار البناء بروح توافقية بناء على مبادئ القانون الدولي وميثاق الأمم المتحدة وتنفيذ الاتفاقات القائمة والتوصل إلى حلول سمولية ومستدامة وضمان تلبية المشاغل المشروعة لجميع الأطراف واختام السيد الرئيس تدعو دولة قطر جميع الأطراف إلى الامتثال لالتزاماتها بموجب القانون الدولي والقانون الدولي لحقوق الإنسان والقانون الإنساني الدولي وتيسير الوصول السريع والآمن ودون عوائق المساعدات الإنسانية إلى المحتاجين وحماية المدنيين والمرافق المدنية والعاملين في المجال الطبي والإنساني كما تشدد على ضرورة إبقاء الحالة الإنسانية للمتأثرين بالأمس والنازحين واللاجئين كأولوية قصوى وتقديم المساعدة اللازمة مع الالتزام بالمبادئ الدولية بتقديم المساعدة الإنسانية وشكرا لكم سيدة We have heard the last speaker in the debate on this item for this meeting. We will hear the remaining speakers tomorrow morning in this hall at 10 a.m., followed by action on the draft resolution submitted under this item. The meeting is adjourned.